Salutations! Welcome to Pod Mortem. I'm Travis Hunter, joined as always by my co-host, my sister, and my brother-in-law. Hi, I'm Renee Hunter Vasquez. Hi, I'm John Paul Vasquez. This week, we're broadcasting live from Melody Lane Tavern in Devil's Kettle, discussing the 2009 horror comedy, Jennifer's Body. This film was directed by Karin Kusama off a screenplay written by Diablo Cody. Fresh off her Oscar win for the 2007 film Juno, Jennifer's body retains Cody's trademark wit while blending horror and humor in a feminist subversion of familiar tropes. While the film received mixed reviews from critics and performed poorly at the box office, the years since its release have allowed for a reappraisal of the film, with many christening it a modern cult classic. This film was suggested to us by friends of the show John Wharton, Kristen Lofton, and Miguel Villa. We want to thank them all for their support as well as this suggestion. So, Jennifer's Body, what were your first impressions on the film? Okay, so weirdly, I had never seen this Mm -hmm. before it was time to cover it for the show. Honestly, surprised the hell out of me. I know. I think that it's like a weird trade-off here because I feel like this was the film that 2009 me needed. (laughs) <laughs> but it was also the film that 2009 me was like that looks fucking stupid right. so like i don't it's very weird did you i'm talk, a gemini did you talk like that i talked just like that <laughs> <laughs> no i mean this film undeniably was grossly mismarketed absolutely um and what i was being led to believe this film was mm-hmm. looked very stupid to me i'll just say it like that right and we'll talk about the marketing i got a lot of shit you thought you thought i was mad about paranormal activity (laughs) (laughs) um but having finally watched it i honestly had a great time i like had a great time there are it's not perfect and there are some issues that i'm not gonna be shy to point out but it's it's a really good time i think megan fox I feel like as a as a culture or as a fucking country, we all owe that woman an apology. One hundred percent. She's been like, she's yeah. great in it. Uh, the story's good. There are a few things that are pretty cringe because, yeah. Hi, you know, two thousand nine. This film is aggressively two thousand nine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> in a lot of ways. But uh, yeah. So the the first time I I saw this was also the last time I saw it. And, which was uh, a few days which ago. Which was a few days ago, <laughs> and um, I I like it. It's not perfect, but I I enjoy it. I feel like it's definitely a movie I'm gonna keep revisiting, and it'll mm-hmm. probably be something that I appreciate more and more the more that I watch it. But I do like it. Right. I remember seeing it. This came out the year before I was released, and uh, I remember seeing it like not very long after I got out, and I was like kind of confused and didn't understand mm-hmm. um and then i never watched it again <laughs> uh, and then i watched it for the show and i i didn't really care for the movie i mean i i don't and then that that's not fair to say because i have had my mind changed before uh-huh. and i do probably need you guys to help me <laughs> i guess understand a lot of it to me was just kind of like what yeah you know uh, and the the dialogue man I, <laughs> it's the, it's the, hard the dialogue is kind of its own character yeah well i didn't like that character <laughs> it was not <laughs> that character ruined the movie for me here's the thing <laughs> here's the thing diablo cody is clearly very smart she's yeah. very funny and like quick Mm -hmm. but some of that fucking dialogue (laughs) yeah i i just oh yikes i okay i saw an interview with diablo cody back whenever i think it was right around when she won the oscar for juno Uh and i full disclosure i fell in love with her then another wife and (laughs) he's had another wife too many wives (laughs) (laughs) and so there will be a lot of forgiveness for her from me (laughs) but in all fairness a lot of the dialogue simply does not work as well as you'd like it to no but there's a lot of it that i think is really quirky and fun definitely i honestly and i haven't seen juno fuck i don't even over a decade at this point Uh but i really liked juno i thought it was very smart and quirky and funny but even in juno (laughs) there were those lines where i'm like girl you knew that that was not it you knew that yeah because i remember liking juno too yeah Uh i thought that was a good movie it was but yeah some of the just i don't know (laughs) you're doing too much it took me all the way out of the movie i was like what the fuck what what am i watching what happened (laughs) Well, I also saw this movie in 2009. Mm-hmm. It's funny because I I really hated the Transformers flicks 
Right. And it to me, this is what proves that a lot of times when you don't like an actor or an actress, sometimes it's less about them, more about how they're directed. Right. right. Because of those films, I didn't think that Megan Fox could act. Yeah. Or at least act well. Right. right. But then you realize when Michael Bay is doing nothing but being like, oh, she just <laughs> needs to be eye Look candy. Hot. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Then you realize that when you get someone like Karin Kusama and you get her saying some dialogue like something from Diablo Cody. Yeah. Megan Fox is fantastic. You mean right. like when she's being treated as a be, human? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> when, you'd be, you'd be when, surprised what that can bring out of when people. When she's not being objectified? Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's interesting. Wow. But I remember I even tweeted in 2009, I might go find it, but I had reservations about watching the film because I was like, I, you know, it's probably right. because the marketing, like we said, yeah. which we'll talk about in just a second, but it's simply not indicative of the film you get. Not at all. And so when you actually watch it, you're like, okay, this is actually smart. It's funny. Mm -hmm. There's good performances. There is. The horror is fun. It right. is. And you're like, when the, what the fuck happened? Yeah, yeah, I was literally telling John Paul, uh, even the poster for this movie. Yeah. I'm like, what does that have to do with it? It's you just not... wanted Megan Fox like in a like schoolgirl yeah. outfit. Like, yeah, that's it. She, she doesn't even wear that. I'm like, this <laughs> no, she has nothing to do with anything. But here's, okay, so here's a couple things. First of all, to close out my thought on that subject, I loved the movie whenever I first saw it. And seeing it again for the show, I have even more of an appreciation for it. I can totally see that. I've actually kind of quietly been championing this film since 2009 to friends of mine who either refused to see it or finally saw it and ended up loving it. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, but the thing is, you can't even blame them for not wanting to see it. No, because, because it, they, yeah. dis they, it was straight disrespected completely. So the issue, since we've been beating around the bush a lot... <laughs> is basically the marketing. It was marketed instead of being this feminist subversion, horror comedy, almost coming of age situation. Mm -hmm. Right. It was marketed simply towards young men. That's not that's not what's happening. No. <laughs> and the thing is, is that I heard that they even put together test audiences. Yeah. And it was both fans of Juno and young like Boys. 18 to 24 <laughs> yeah Boys. and so both these groups are not necessarily who this movie is made right. for no and so whenever they get the common cards back i think it was diablo cody she said one of the cards just said needs more boobs and boobs was spelled b-e-w-b-s <laughs> boobs and, yeah. and the studio was like well, well maybe well, we, yeah, maybe maybe we should have more yeah. boobs. that's who they're listening to <laughs> It's just fucking crazy. First of all, I think oh, I think man. test audiences are fucking dumb. It's stupid. I don't yeah. think it should even be a thing personally. Yeah. But the other thing about it is that in an interview I saw, I think it was at Beyond Fest, mm -hmm. Kusama said that whenever, and Diablo Cody also had difficulty with the marketing department, but when they got the trailer back, there was not one second of Amanda Seyfried in it. <laughs> it was all just Megan Fox. What the and hell? They, she was like, um, you know, I have an issue with this because basically one of the main characters of the film right. isn't even in the trailer. I would say arguably the main character. Yes. Yeah. I, I yes. literally, yeah. I, when I'm watching this, I'm like, this isn't even about, no. really? Not yeah. about Megan Fox at all. But the note she got back from marketing, and I think Diablo Cody did as well, was Megan Fox hot. And that's it. Yeah, it's like, she said a caveman write this? Yeah, yeah. She said it was I was like, I think we watched the same interview. Yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. But yeah, I, she had said that the feedback they were getting, she was like, please nobody tell nobody tell Megan this. Yeah. This is gonna fucking crush her. Like I that's all that this woman can be. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just it's fucking depressing, it honestly. Is. And according to because I I'm sure you watched the conversation with Diablo Cody and Megan Fox. Yeah. According to that, it was on Entertainment Tonight, I believe. It was. Diablo Cody said that basically she wrote this film before she even wrote Juno. And it was through the success of that film because of how much she loves horror films. Right. That the second she got like the green light to do whatever she wanted, mm -hmm. she said, we're making Jennifer's body. Right. And so it's so fucking crushing to see the reaction that it got. Yeah. But it's so fucking cool to see that it's kind of turning around. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah it's it took fuck like over a decade yeah. but at yeah. least it found its audience now yeah like i'm sure that was so crushing for them like i can't yeah. even imagine i hate to be the one that's like i knew the dog before he yeah. came <laughs> <laughs> i liked it back then i did but <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, before we seduce and devour this film, we would like to issue a warning for spoilers. Podmortem is a very in-depth podcast, and in thoroughly discussing horror films, we have no choice but to spoil a thing or two. If you don't wish to be spoiled, please go watch the film, then come back and enjoy the show. If you've already seen the film or don't care about spoilers, let's head through the trees. So the film opens, sweeping across the lawn of a suburban house at night. Inside the house, a girl lies in her bed in her room watching TV. She scratches her arm and runs strands of hair across her lips. I haven't had long hair, so I haven't... This is the first time I've ever really had long hair, so I... Is that what you do? I mean, you can, I guess. Is there a purpose? Or no. Is it like sliding it's thread like, uh, through them? <laughs> But we all knew that girl that would like suck on her hair and stuff. We did? I did. Was it you? Yeah. I didn't- <laughs> <laughs> but outside, we're now in the backyard of the house, creeping past an actual horse that's tied up back there and then peering into an open window at the girl. The camera rises above the bed to reveal Jennifer Check, played by Megan Fox, as the title fades in, Jennifer's Body. From her bedside, we see Anita Needy Lesnicki, played by Amanda Seyfried, standing outside the window, hood up, looking conspicuous as all hell. Yes. And she's staring directly at Jennifer. Yeah. Yes. So you're like, what the fuck is going on? They're like <laughs> dropping us into the middle of this thing. Yeah. yeah. But when Jennifer turns to look, Needy is gone. I just wanted to jump in here very mm-hmm. quickly um, about their names. Right. Now, I know I just got done saying how intelligent I, I find Diablo Cody to be, <laughs> but um, I feel like this was their names phoned it in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Her name, Jennifer Check. I read that she uses and I do the same thing. I used to fancy myself, you know, a little bit of a writer <laughs> and I would name somebody, you know, Becky, Becky what or Becky who yeah, or whatever yeah. until you figure it out. She uses Check, Jennifer Check. That was her placeholder. Mm-hmm. And then later she was like. I'll just name her Jennifer Check. And then the name <laughs> Needy, they're like, well, it's going to be a needy character. Yeah. And then she literally just left her name as Needy. But the funny thing is, <laughs> <laughs> was like, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. I, whenever, whenever I saw, you know, her name is Needy, I was like, well, that's a little on the nose. Yeah. yeah. But she isn't all that needy. I feel like in maybe in the inception of needy, she like was an earlier draft. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I just found that kind of funny. I was no, like, we great. can just do that. Yeah, like, dude. <laughs> just, that's allowed. It, yeah. Whatever you want. And then you make a full film with <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's named asshole. Right. <laughs> like, can, we, can we do that? And also you're, you're, if you write, you're a writer, you're a writer. All right. Because the, I'd like to be a writer as well. <laughs> <laughs> We're all writers. We're all writers. Okay. God damn it. <laughs> But in a voiceover, we hear Needy say, hell is a teenage girl. Fantastic opening line. Honestly, it's like a thesis statement for the whole film. Yeah, I love it so much. I can't believe it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and we're, what a bold place to begin your film. Yeah, for sure. Right. And I think when you see that, if I was one of the people that saw the trailer, I'd be like, I don't know that this is the yeah. film. <laughs> <laughs> Bait and switch. Exactly. Yeah. But we then transition to a large window, sunlight beaming in. We pull back to see Needy seated in a chair, an inmate of a psychiatric hospital. Needy tells us that while she's not perfect, she does have a few fans. We then pull back further as we see a collection of mail, cards, and gifts littered all over her floor, with Needy admitting that she's actually kind of the shit. (laughs) (laughs) I want to point out right now, because it's already started, but I really like the music in this film. I'll agree with that for sure. I know that you're talking about the score, yes. but uh, well, both honestly, there's a really great song in this. Well, b- <laughs> and we'll get to that in a bit. <laughs> but an orderly pops into the doorway to let Needy know that it's wreck time. We see that she's knitting away at something, but she thanks him and sets it down to get changed. As she undresses, we notice a scar on her back, and she continues her narration. She says a lot of the letters basically tell her that everything will be okay if she just accepts Jesus Christ into her heart. As we zoom in on a photo of Chip Dove, played by Johnny Simmons, sitting on her windowsill, she tells us that even though she says the words, nothing changes and nobody comes back. So again, we're starting trying to figure out a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some shit has clearly already (laughs) gone down. (laughs) Yeah. But in her finest pair of bunny slippers, Needy heads to rec time. Passing other inmates, some just hanging out and others playing badminton, which is pretty nice for this facility. (laughs) (laughs) She decides to go for the tetherball. She says rec time is supposed to help people vent their frustrations, but then we see with one punch, she just demolishes the fucking tetherball. 
So, <laughs> just breaks. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody looks. I yeah. would. They'd be like, God damn it, I was yeah. next. <laughs> <laughs> I love that tether ball. Yeah. But we then see her walking through the cafeteria holding a tray with a solitary toaster pastry on it. She says the extensive rec time is meant to make them docile, but as we scroll through her patient chart, we see that not only is she prone to hallucinations, but she also has uncontrollable fits of rage, has put several orderlies in the hospital, and is, quote, a kicker. Yeah. So it has not worked for her, the rec time. No. (laughs) Still in the cafeteria, a doctor criticizes her choice of breakfast, recommending a more complex carbohydrate, but before she can even get the full word out, Needy kicks her in the chest like stink meaner. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and just sends her flying across the table. He was talking all that good. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> but in conjunction with her recommendation, Needy recommends that she shut the fuck up and spits on her. But then she is promptly snatched up by a couple of orderlies the whole time kicking like Liu Kang as she's carried out. <laughs> I will say I went into this, you know, completely open minded. I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to love this or oh, I'm going to hate this or whatever. Mm-hmm. So far. And like I said, I've never seen this. Uh So all of my notes are having never seen this film before. (laughs) It's a lot of disclaimer. I I was like, now that was a lot. Oh, it was. I'm like, is she fucking Captain America? Like, how did she just kung fu kick this bitch across the fucking cafeteria? She got the fucking serum or whatever. (laughs) It it kind of had the same effect. I was like, this is a lot. My thoughts change as we go on, but. At this beginning part, I'm like, that was a th- fucking Amanda Seyfried. C- come on. Yeah. I I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I'm just like, okay, I'm I'm learning a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a crash course. Yes. I do want to point out, they call the pastries toastums. toastums. And I thought it was some made up brand like on CSI when they said friend agenda page. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Instead of what, MySpace at the time. But it turns out Toastums are real (laughs) and they were invented the same year that Pop-Tarts were in 1964. (gasps) Oh, shit. So I'm like, which came first? Poor Toastums. Yeah. Should we all start (laughs) eating Toastums? Switch to Toastums. Yeah. But in an overhead shot, we then see her getting thrown into solitary confinement. Needy eyes a high up window as day turns into night and she says that she didn't used to be like this. She actually used to be normal. She says it was only after the killings that she started to feel a little rough around the edges. Some random music begins to play through a loudspeaker in the cell Mm -hmm. and she kind of shields her ears in annoyance. And that's when she takes us back. Yeah. (laughs) It's like now we can learn. Yeah. Yeah. So over shots of Devil's Kettle, Minnesota, Needy tells us that this is where everything happened. She says the town was named after a waterfall and we see it in all of its majesty, but at the base of it is a whirlpool. I just want to point out larger whirlpools are called maelstroms, which is probably a top five word for me. No, it's great. (laughs) (laughs) But she says that scientists tried to figure out what the deal with it was, but never could. And she posits that it could be a hole to another dimension altogether, or it could just be really deep. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. (laughs) Yeah. I did see that the Devil's Kettle is a real formation. Oh, shit. At, I think, uh, Magny State Park in Minnesota. That's cool. Yeah. What's used here is obviously just really well done CG. Mm -hmm. But the real one, I guess it confused scientists for years. They're like, we don't know what the fuck this is. Yeah. But in 2016, I read on Wikipedia, they did ruin it. Uh (laughs) They said, well, actually, the water just goes to a nearby river that's underneath the waterfall. I mean, it takes the magic out of (laughs) it. Yeah. Big time. (laughs) But we in this film, we actually do see scientists just yeah. <laughs> a little more confused. Just what are they throwing orange balls yeah. down there? Yeah. And then they see them disappear and they're like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> what? Like scratching their I, Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but as we scan through yearbook photos of Jennifer with the cheerleading squad, Needy working at the newspaper and Chip with the high school band, kind of looking like the lead singer of Fall Out Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Needy explains that all their lives were normal just two months ago. We transition from the photos to the pep rally where the photos were taken, full of sound and color. Chip drums away with the band, and we cut to Jennifer twirling a flag in slow motion as Needy applauds from the crowd. She says Jennifer was her best friend, which people found kind of difficult to comprehend. She simply states, sandbox love never dies. Again, Diablo Cody's writing, I think that that is such a good line. That's an excellent mm-hmm. line. Yeah. Because she said she didn't say, well, Jennifer and I met in first grade. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, no, but that tells you everything. It says everything. Yeah, yeah. that tells yeah. you everything. so good. I also saw that in that Entertainment Tonight interview, they apparently auditioned a ton of actresses to play Needy, including Emma Stone. I, yeah. 
I thought that was interesting. What? Yeah. But they said Megan Fox was always their first choice oh, for right. And she should have been. Yeah. She should have been for sure. At this time, I don't think anybody else could have mm-hmm. played Jennifer. It's just perfect casting. The other interesting thing is that Diablo Cody said in that interview that both of these characters are her. Because Diablo Cody is obviously not her Christian name. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And I think she was born Brooke Busey, if I'm not mistaken. I know it's I know it's Brooke something. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but she said that Needy is Brooke, and All right. Jennifer is Diablo, which is basically kind of the persona that she had to take on to get people to notice her. All right, and I've, so it's interesting. That's right. super fascinating. Like I, I really, I'm telling you, I watched that interview. I was like, I really like this movie, and then I watched that interview, and I was like, this fucking movie, man. <laughs> like it gives you so much insight to not only like her creative process and mm-hmm. making it, but like all the shit that they went through. It's on YouTube if yeah. y'all want to watch it. It's like half an hour. It was really, really. It's insightful. worth the time. Yeah, it is. But the girls wave at each other, and the sweet moment is broken up by Chastity, played by Valeria Tian, who calls the pair, and I quote, lesbi gay. Yikes. Yikes. Now that, okay, again, I know I just said that her writing is really quirky (laughs) and smart, but this line is like aggressively 2009. There's so much. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. I'd say for every line that I was like, that's a great fucking line. There's a line that I'm like, ooh, nah, yeah. no, we don't, Yikes. we don't say that. No. Yeah, this was one of them for me. I was like, ooh, we're starting early. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking immediately. <laughs> but Needy just kind of shrugs it off. But in the next scene, Jennifer greets Needy, calling her Monistat, which Needy responds to with, hey, Vagisil. I'm like, I don't, I. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple things. First of all, Jennifer's jeans are like, hey, hi, hello. In case y'all forgot, it is 2009. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> why were our pants so low? I mean, it wasn't y'all, but I God damn. Yeah, they're know. like, wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> secondly, this is this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> when, and John Paul, I know you said that, the what'd you say? The dialogue was a character that you didn't appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. It's shit like this. And I remember feeling the same way as much as I loved Juno about a couple lines in Juno, because it literally feels like as you're watching this movie, a, you're very aware that you're watching a movie when (laughs) they say shit like that. Yeah. And B, it feels like Diablo Cody wanted girls in high school to be calling each other vagicil and monistat <laughs> that's what it feels like to me it doesn't feel authentic it does it, it just doesn't and i was waiting i like came prepared because i thought john paul would be like well tarantino's dialogue well listen <laughs> <laughs> i know people don't talk like that either but it, it maybe cool people do we're not cool people we don't know how the fuck they talk i've nobody, never been cool no yeah. <laughs> nobody talks like this nobody talks like no they do in they this don't. movie well yeah and I think that's a fair point. And I think the thing about Tarantino's dialogue is there's an odd poetry to it. Right. With this, I feel like it's just straight quirky. It feels to me like you're trying to make fetch happen. That's what it feels (laughs) like. You're like, this is going to fuck it. Everybody's going to be saying this shit. That's what it feels like. And me being who I am, that makes me like, well, I'm not going to fucking say it. I'm never going to say it. (laughs) What, in defiance? Yes. It just, I don't know, feels like you're being goaded into, this is going to be the new cool thing to say. That's what it, it just doesn't feel authentic to me. You're very offended. Apple for somebody who (laughs) does it so well, like when she, she, some of her shit, we talked about it. Sandbox love. Yeah. Fucking hell is a teenage girl. Fantastic. Chef's kiss. Mm-hmm. Then you're going to come at me with some fucking Monistat and Vagisil <laughs> and why Diablo. The, why the name brands? Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get some love for great value? Please. Uh, God damn. It's just, it's like this. Uh-huh. It, it killed a lot. When it ha- when this <laughs> happens, I'm like I what he turned it like off. I, I yeah, yeah like, every, like I didn't even watch this everything that happened before you just ruined it for me really? I'm like damn why would you have to do that is like why I was starting to enjoy nope fucked it up again it's like, <laughs> like uh, uh. these are the worst nicknames <laughs> I've yeah. ever heard there's just <laughs> there's just a couple things like that and maybe it's me being nitpicky everybody's probably like no that's fucking funny and like I guess it is funny but I feel like what we're trying to do here okay. it just doesn't it doesn't do it for so me. you're saying funny and you said this is supposed to be a comedy i didn't get that at all oh it's definitely yeah, it's, a comedy it's definitely i a, didn't get that at all you don't think it's a horror comedy no i was like this is a, <laughs> that's probably why you said <laughs> yeah like let, let's let and i i mean this with all due respect uh-huh but i was like this is a shitty horror movie but now that <laughs> i do respect, respect. 
<laughs> well, I don't want to be mean to the people who made it. Yeah, I mean, but you, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> so but you the, meant this to be funny because well, I I took this as a serious well, movie. Well, two things. Number <laughs> one, yeah, <laughs> the, res- the respect disappeared immediately. Well, sorry. <laughs> number two, I feel like there are so many lines here that are like clearly meant comedically. For no. sure, I think maybe that's why you didn't like no. it. And all, it's and all, not. I didn't, and I love comedy movies. None of this to me came off as comedy. I think it's a mess. I, I had not, none of it. I'm I was st- like, what? I'm still laughing at, with all due respect, this yeah. is fucking st- <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's happening here? And I, I, I think one thing we can get into later is I feel like there's also a bit of satire in here. For sure. Okay, yeah. But, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but <laughs> with all due respect, I yeah. I'll, uh, I'll I didn't press mean, on. Yeah. I didn't mean to derail us. No, but you're fine. That bugged me. But Jennifer tells her that they're going out tonight to see a band called Low Shoulder, saying there will be some tasty treats there for her, most salty of which will be their lead singer. Now I'm like, I salty? I'm uh, sorry. This is what I'm <laughs> again, talking about. Yeah. This is what see, I'm talking it about. It happened again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so quickly. This is back yeah. to back. Yeah. But Needy says that she has plans to hang out with Chip tonight, which Jennifer boos and says, cross out Needy, drawing an X over her BFF. Needy, not wanting to disappoint Jennifer, asks what time the show is. Jennifer's like, I'll pick you up at 8.30, and she's off after telling Needy to wear something cute. That night, Needy tries on a ton of outfits in front of her mirror as she explains that to Jennifer, something cute means to not look like a loser, but don't outshine her either. I love that at this point here and when she's watching her at the pep rally or whatever Mm -hmm. the fuck they were doing, Uh um, are we really pretending that Needy is not gorgeous? That hurts this a little bit for me. It really annoys me. Are we doing the fucking uh, she's all that with, oh my God, without her glasses? Like, no, she's beautiful. Like Like that annoys the fuck out of me. That's very annoying to (laughs) me. Like, I'm sorry, but before her transformation, I was quite (laughs) smitten. (laughs) Yeah, I don't understand. It's like, I I think that it's, they... (laughs) They really attempted, because even in an interview, I heard Amanda Seyfried describe Needy as frumpy. Stop, And I'm like, dude, you're yeah, Amanda Seyfried. Not, yeah. So annoying. That's not who this character no. is. No. <laughs> no. But she elaborates saying that stomach is cool, but no cleavage because, quote, tits are Jennifer's trademark, which is kind of important for later. It is. Chip reclines on her bed, totally dejected, insecurely criticizing her outfit choice. She has like an inch of skin showing. Yeah. He's yeah. like, oh, I can see your fucking vagina. <laughs> what? Is that well, what he, he says? says? He, like yeah. he yeah. says front, front butt. butt. <laughs> Which, <laughs> just call it a vagina. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's like, I'm leaving you. <laughs> yeah. Say, I can see your labia. Don't say Good. front butt. <laughs> but he says that he's never even heard of Low Shoulder and asks which member Jennifer's into. Needy confirms it's the lead singer because girls like Jennifer don't go out with drummers. Which he's a fucking drummer. I know, dude. Like, <laughs> right. like wow. oh my god, yeah. I'm going home. I'd leave <laughs> yeah. right there. But Chip is offended. <laughs> However, all becomes right again after Needy explains Jennifer's use of the word salty to mean beautiful, and Chip says, in that case, <laughs> Needy is soy sauce. <laughs> that was cute. That's good. I like yeah. it. I was like, nice one, kid. But they kiss. Needy starts to undo Chip's belt, but then her Jennifer senses tingle and she realizes that her best friend is downstairs. This like psychic connection kind of weirds Chip out, and Jennifer just calls up to Needy from the first floor. She says that she has to bail before Jennifer gets annoyed, with Chip saying that she does whatever Jennifer says. Needy defends herself, though, saying that they all like the same things. That's why they're Biff's showing off her BFF necklace. I appreciated the zoom in on the necklace. (laughs) It was a tight shot. (laughs) That made me laugh. I never would have known. (laughs) This makes me question, and I know we haven't fully gotten into Needy and Chip's dynamics yet, but how long have they been together that he's still like, doesn't know what salty means. Uh He's like, oh, whenever, you know, whatever. Like, it feels like they've been together for a while. Mm -hmm. So like, wouldn't he, like, this is just is what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, maybe he doesn't commit her language to memory like Needy does. I mean, I guess. I don't know. I just feel like. He's like salty like a potato chip. Or (laughs) Please clarify. She's like, no, beautiful. He's like, I've never heard this. (laughs) I do not know this. But Chip says that really, honestly, Needy and Jennifer have nothing in common. But Needy just shrugs it off and heads downstairs. Chip follows close behind, and Jennifer shows off her mom's car keys, saying that she has the whip for the night. She reluctantly says hi to Chip, but then says, it smells like Thai food in here. Have you two been fucking? 
Which Diablo Cody said is her favorite line in the whole movie. Wow. This line sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate this line so much. Megan Fox said that people quote this to her more than any other quote in the film. Which is weird because there's so many better quotes. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm too old. Maybe if I saw this at 19 or 20, I'd be like, that's <laughs> fucking hilarious. I, I mean, I don't know. I feel like but it's disrespectful to Thai food. Yes, yeah. it is. Thai food, Thai people. Yeah. Have you ever yeah. seen, have you ever watched Ugly Delicious with oh, David yeah. Chang? Oh, yeah. For sure. First of all, oh, yeah. that show's amazing. It's on yeah. Netflix. Please go watch it's it. It's really, really good. I'm not being paid to say this, but <laughs> I would like it. I, I don't mind it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chang, Yeah, please. please. But one of the things that he said, a story that he brought up, because David Chang is Korean, he said that it, it's it's a strange thing to reconcile in his mind how now, like, Korean food, mm -hmm. Japanese food, Chinese food, right. it's become this thing that's almost, like, cool, cool yeah. trendy. Yeah, yeah. But when he was a kid, he said all he remembers is the other kids making fun of him for the food he ate, how it smelled, how it looked. Right. Yeah. And so when they, when fucking... Jennifer, Jennifer says this that's all I thought of yeah and I was like so we're supposed to hate Jennifer okay thank, thank you yeah <laughs> I'm glad you said that we're not supposed to like this character right I don't, I don't think I mean, so well John Paul you caught on way quicker than me because yeah. I don't say I, that's in my nose but not for a couple pages <laughs> really uh, yeah no. because well, I'm like maybe I'm like it's 2009. It's two, like, uh -huh. That's what I keep telling myself. Maybe she's supposed to be... That's funny and quirky. Like I, I, Maybe that's how we're supposed to take it because I, apparently I, ignorance was in in fucking 2009. But <laughs> yeah, I don't... Jennifer's a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> With all due respect. Man. Well, yeah. See, <laughs> for I'm just time. saying. <laughs> my, my thing about it was, I, I honestly... <laughs> whenever they waved each other... To each other at the pep rally i was like okay this is a cute friendship for sure right. but the second that she was talking about how she was not supposed to look like a loser but she can't outshine jennifer yeah. either i'm like okay jennifer kind of sucks yeah and it yeah. only gets worse but then this line i was like oh she really fucking sucks yeah, yeah. but they're, they're like <laughs> yeah even chip i mean like they laugh that's why i'm like i guess this is supposed to be light-hearted I don't know. But I didn't like it. I, yeah. I'd be like, get the fuck out of my yeah. house. <laughs> I'm just hanging out with Chip today. Yeah, right? <laughs> fuck off, Jennifer. But after a funnily awkward shoving match between Jennifer and Needy gets out of hand, they head out the door on their way to the Melody Lane bar. Chip slags off the bar and Jennifer tells him he's just jealous. Well, she actually says he's lime green jello. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Now, hold on. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, couldn't, really yeah. I will say, okay. And I know that I've taken a lot of issues with the dialogue. I thought that was cute. <laughs> no, that was good. <laughs> That's the one free pass we get. I had no issue with that. It was lime green jello. But he somberly tells her to stop kidnapping his girlfriend and the girls head off. We arrive at Melody Lane Bar, panning across the random goings on. One of the bartenders is actually played by Diablo Cody in a cameo role. I noticed that. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are you going to talk about the song playing? Yeah. <laughs> Emergency. I, that was, yes. <laughs> that was the first thing I thought. I was like, well, Nate's going to be pleased. <laughs> but Jennifer and Needy walk in, getting a massive X on their hands since they're under 21. Craig, a football player played by Jeremy Schutze, nervously tells Jennifer that she looks pretty, and she just says, what's up, and laughs at him to Needy. Jennifer says, Craig thinks he's cute enough for her, which is why he's in remedial math. She actually Shh. doesn't say that R word. Yeah, yeah. she used another R word. Fucking which, 2009. Ew, uh, oh Again, my God. See, it's just piling up that you're not supposed to like Jennifer. Right. I, that's what I... I was like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> but Needy notices Ahmet, an exchange student from India played by Aman Jahal, and Jennifer muses aloud, wondering whether or not Ahmet is circumcised. I'm like, again... What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> She's, it's again, I think it's intentional. I don't think that you're supposed to see this and be like, man, Jennifer's so fucking cool. I feel like people did. Well, yeah. then they're missing the point, yeah. I think. But see, that's why I'm saying, like, the, I, 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 there, to me, this wasn't funny. So I was like, right. there's no way this is comedy. No, well, that's this not is funny. Just a, no, but I'm saying, like you said, it's 2009. You got to think of, you know what I mean? But it doesn't matter what year it was. It was like, this is, I was like, I don't what's happening no i totally understand and i don't say that to make excuses no. i say that as what was the intention here because right. in 2009 a lot of people thought that that was okay to say yeah it never was no but a lot of people thought that it was so i'm right. like is this jennifer being 
oh my god like she's saying you know she doesn't care she'll just say anything right, right. or is it oh wow what a fucking bitch like how are we supposed to take it i don't In think 2021 s- wow what a fucking bitch yeah i don't think that we're supposed to like her i think we're supposed to identify with needy okay right okay, okay. Jennifer pops a cigarette into her mouth and goes to light it, but it's snatched away by Officer Roman Duda, played by Chris Pratt. Not Star-Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? I was so shocked to see him here. (laughs) But he takes off his cop sunglasses, jokingly threatening to arrest her for possession, but it's revealed that he still has two months left in the academy, so good luck with that. Calm down. Jennifer asks if he's going to cuff her, and she grabs his crotch, and he's like, Marge, not here. (laughs) (laughs) Needy notices Lowe's shoulder setting up on stage, and we see Nikolai Wolf, the band's lead singer played by Adam Brody. Not Seth Cohen. Yeah. I know. <laughs> this is a who's who. <laughs> as well as Chaz, Mick, Dirk, and the keyboardist, played by Sal Cortez, Ryan Levine, Juan Radinger, and Colin Askey, respectively. The keyboardist didn't get a name. No. <laughs> no <that sucks. laughs> he did not get a name. Usually the drummer gets disrespected. Yeah. No, the bass player. Ah, oh, there you right, go. Yeah. There you go. But Jennifer remarks that you can tell they're from the city. And when Roman's homophobic slur doesn't get the reception he hoped it would, he bails from Jennifer and Needy's company. Bye. (laughs) You won't be missed. No. I read originally that they wanted, instead of Adam Brody, they wanted either Pete Wentz or Joel Madden. I'm um, glad they didn't. I'm glad they didn't do that. That would have dated the film so hard. Oh, man. (laughs) This is really 2009. (laughs) Holy shit. (laughs) Jennifer says Low Shoulder needs a couple of groupies, telling Needy that they have all the power, grabbing Needy's boobs to make a point about the power they hold over men. The girls walk over, and Jennifer awkwardly introduces herself and Needy to Nikolai. She's like, you play instruments super good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Smooth as fuck. I was like, wow, man. Right, so maybe did, you're not perfect. Yeah, didn't you just say something about power and yeah. you're drooling all over the... You that, salt. Yeah. <laughs> that was weak. Yeah. <laughs> But Needy, flexing that journalistic muscle, asks why Low Shoulder is playing out here in Devil's Kettle. Nikolai says, you know, it's important to try to connect with our fans in the shitty areas, too. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that made me laugh out loud because yeah. he's literally like, your town is shit. Yeah. And Jennifer's like, no, yeah, totally. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> she said, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Jennifer offers to buy him a drink and said she'll snag the bar's 9-11 tribute shot, which honestly was as awkward a line in 2009 as it is a what the fuck kind of a line now. Yeah, yeah. and there's another... Yeah. Uh, I mean, we can talk about it when we get there, but there's another 9-11 situation mm-hmm. later, and I'm like, what the fuck? I think I was so confused because even if this film was written in like 2006, 2007, yeah. and it came out in 2009, it's still not a timely joke to make. No. no. <laughs> it's very no. weird. I, was, I don't know. I was very confused by it. But she heads off to scoop up the drinks, which she tells Needy will be easy by playing Hello Titty with the bartender. I was like, that's good wordplay. <laughs> <laughs> also, Two Tickets to Paradise is playing now. <laughs> so that's interesting. But like Chip, when they were leaving, he's like, that's not even a club. That's like a shitty bar. Like the music they're playing, every <laughs> like bar that yeah. old people go to to just sit and drink. That's, that's literally the music, yeah. <laughs> He's not wrong, dude. No, he's not. But Nikolai leans down to Dirk, asking, what about her? Dirk's like, Jan Brady? Referring to Needy. But Nikolai says no and points at Jennifer. He says, even in small towns, there are girls who love to show it off, but never give it up. He says, Jennifer is definitely a virgin. Needy overhears this and confronts him, defending her best friend by saying, you know what? She is a virgin, and that beats sleeping with creeps like you. Now, <laughs> just uh, real quick, at his face. Uh, yeah, she could not have hear, uh, heard them. Oh no, from no. that far, not at all. With the bar, the music, people playing pool. Mm-hmm. You, you didn't hear a word that no, said. definitely maybe not. one word. Maybe, maybe, maybe Jennifer. Yeah, <laughs> like, she's like, huh? Mm-hmm. It just annoyed me because, like, that's your defense of her. Yeah, I was confused. Yeah, yeah. she is a virgin. It's like, wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> Not that either one is a good or a bad thing. Yeah. I it's, just feel like my go-to would be like, hey, that's my friend. Shut yeah. the fuck up. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. You don't need to know. It you would don't just, need to know any of that one way or the other. It would just be simply, that's none of your goddamn fuck business. Off. Not my friend's history. <laughs> <laughs> never i just it i don't know odd. how that's a def- that's not a defense no. I, it was so odd to me but nikolai looks back at dirk who shrugs with a smirk on his face we then see jennifer bring back the red white and blue shots but she's intercepted by needy she tells her what happened and jennifer's like what 
I'm not even a backdoor virgin. <laughs> she said thanks to Star Lord. Yeah, oh, dude. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Starfish Lord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she sets down <laughs> That was a lot. <laughs> she sets down the drinks as the band takes the stage for real. Addressing the crowd, Nikolai accidentally calls the town Devil's Lake. And when someone shouts out Devil's Kettle, he's like, fucking A right of this. <laughs> he's like, hey, that's, yeah, fucking that's, Springton. That <laughs> that's exactly what I thought. Oh, dude. That's a quick recovery. Yeah. Now. yeah. I I know that he plays such an asshole, but Adam Brody is so good in this I movie. I love yeah. him. He's really good in this movie. But the band begins to play a song called Through the Trees which is actually performed by a band called Wildling, which was at the time called No Country. Two of the members, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of history here, two of the members of which are actually in this film as members of Low Shoulder. Hey, I, uh, all right. Well, as soon as you said through the trees, I lit a lighter and held it up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's our anthem now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the opening for the show. Mm -hmm. I read that about... Um, because John Paul was like, there's no fucking way Adam Brody's singing that. I was like, maybe yeah. he is. Did you have no faith in no. him? Or? I mean, well, it's literally not. It's not him. No. I I remember him when he was on the OC. Right. Seth Cohen. He's yeah, the best part of I the I was a kid watching, or a teenager. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not afraid to say it. It's, it's, <laughs> it's kind of trash show, but it's... I liked it. Yeah. So I knew him from them. So I listened to him for seasons and seasons talk. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's not him. <laughs> that's not, that's him. not him singing. He couldn't pull that off. Yeah, no. Ryan Levine does the vocals. Yeah. So basically he's lip syncing, which he does a good job. Oh, no, yeah. You know, it yeah. literally yeah. could have been him. But anyway they make a joke about Adam Levine later on. Yes. And so I was like, oh my God, Adam Levine, yeah. Ryan Levine spelled the same way. I was like, they're brothers. They're not brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Did they just not even? Not even, they're not related whatsoever. So That's fucking funny. Just to save y'all the Google track right. that I took, yeah. not brothers. Those five seconds? <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired from it. <laughs> but the crowd gathers and the song really fits the themes of the film in a weird way. No, yeah. it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just be clear. And it even forecasts some plot points. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, God damn. But <laughs> <laughs> they did that. Like, yeah. They all didn't have to do all that, but they did. Did they get a copy of the script before? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but Jennifer holds Needy's hand and she looks over at her smiling. But Needy's smile disappears after a moment and she lets go of Jennifer's hand. I thought that was very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But as Jennifer is transfixed by Nikolai, the sound grows a bit distant and we see a small fire growing at the edges of the stage, reaching across the rafters. The band stops playing as Nikolai looks on smiling. People are screaming, catching fire. A girl is fucking trampled. Ahmed is crushed by a falling beam and Needy rushes Jennifer to the bathroom so they can escape the blaze out of a window. Nobody even noticed, though, until it was a full-blown yeah. fucking yeah. building eating fire. And Nikolai was like, would you look at that? Yeah. I'm like, does this happen Whoa. at every show? Yeah, Did no you start fire, the fucking fire? No fire alarms, no nothing. <laughs> oh, this you're right. Nothing. Just, <laughs> I didn't even like, yeah. that. It's a little hot in here, honey. Let's get on the dance floor. <laughs> yeah. And then you're on fire. Yeah, then you're exactly. on fire. We don't do that in Devil's Kettle. We yeah. have. <laughs> One thing I did read is that Diablo Cody wanted to do a controlled burn. Mm -hmm. I guess she's always been like afraid of fire in small places. It's right. just a fear she's always uh, had. Understandable. Mm -hmm. So she wanted to face that fear by lighting herself on fire. Oh, shit. Bitch. Like a stunt woman. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, it's it's admirable. Did she do it? No. <laughs> <laughs> but Melody Lane burns as we see stuntmen in the background working and screaming their asses off on yes. fire. Yes. I was like, is this the mist? Yeah, yeah. no, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> Needy and Jennifer collapse to the ground on their knees. Needy asks if she's okay, but Jennifer has checked out. No pun intended. Nah. Her last name is Check. <laughs> 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 Nikolai pops up, somehow holding a glass of whiskey, saying he's been looking for them. I was mad. <laughs> like, yeah. this literally annoyed me. Again, went into this with a clean slate. I was like, that's stupid. He literally has his coat on. He stopped yeah. and put his coat on. He fucking made himself a drink. And then he just sauntered outside. I will tell you right now, there's something about this fire in general that I just flat out don't <laughs> like. <laughs> I, I don't know why. There's something about it. I think the fact that not only was it so abrupt, 
but it wasn't treated with the seriousness it deserves. Not at all. Yeah. I feel like it was like, okay, we need something big to happen yeah. to get them outside. A fire. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally, literally, it, it really makes no sense. anything else could have happened. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> you know? Or you could have finished the show and then after. And then just left. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, or she could have been like, "No, let's go." Dragged her outside, yeah. and then this happened. Like, yeah. you didn't. You're right. Dude. Like, it's so weird. <laughs> the and the way you said it with the fire in general. Yeah, <laughs> I don't appreciate no. it. I mean, a boy was crushed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like a lot of shit. And then, like you're saying, with Nikolai just being outside, I'm like, this is not. We're not operating within the laws of physics. Yeah, I guess no. <laughs> Because how the fuck did he do that? I rewound it because he has like a green jacket on. Mm-hmm. Right, but it. it I was like, did he change his shirt? Because he's wearing a black button down <laughs> mm, on yeah. stage. And I was like, he fucking put a jacket. A fire is blazing yeah. and he put his jacket on. Be- n- now, it's not even after the fire. People are dying. We, yeah, no, yeah. We're still like, on right fire. Now. Oh, yeah. yeah. 10 feet away, there's a man engulfed yeah. in flames. I'm smelling bacon and yeah. fucking. <laughs> you've, you've got whiskey. a glass of whiskey. <laughs> I'm done. But he tells them that they should come to his van, and after forcing his drink into Jennifer's mouth, he snags her by the hand and takes her to the van. Very dazed and against Needy's protests, Jennifer says that she wants to go to his really cool van. Needy reminds her that they have Jennifer's mom's car, but Jennifer tells her to shut up, and we then see the doors close as fire explodes behind Needy. There's like so much happening in this mm-hmm. moment. Yeah. Uh, the audacity of fucking Nikolai to do this in yeah. front of her friend. Yeah. And you're a big ish band playing in a small town. Everybody right. knows who the fuck you yeah. are. And you still just <laughs> did this. Well, um, the townsfolk are thoroughly distracted. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> they're on fire. <laughs> they're dying. Ne- <laughs> Needy's not. No. And she's still got soot on her face. Yeah. So like we're still grounded in a moment that there's a fire blazing behind us. Mm-hmm. But she's like, no, a van though. Yeah. And then her telling Needy to shut up and Needy yeah. looks like she just slapped her in the face. Yeah. But like Jennifer looks so lost and sad when the van doors close. Yeah. It's just such a moment. Like there's so much going on right here. It feels you're like, wow, what a bitch. And then you see her and you're like, oh my God, like help her. Like someone help her. Yeah. It's just, it's very weird. It's, it's, it's a little confusing to me mm-hmm. i think that it feels like a lot of things are being rushed all at once yes yeah yeah i feel like maybe that's what it is i'm like give me a second I like think, I, yeah. I we were on fire I think, yeah. I, <laughs> give, me, give me one second it's it's flat out down to pacing yeah, yeah. because again a kid was crushed <laughs> like i that i think i think that's the thing that gets me is that visual is like so like jarring yeah. and then adam brody's outside like hey we, i've got a van outside yeah. like what <laughs> but i don't know anyway it just made me feel two different ways about jennifer all at once yeah so i, I mean which i guess is the complexity of a character but so it's good in some ways it is but i'm just like i fucking need a minute yeah. diablo i don't yeah. know what, <laughs> i'm fucking confused but needy says that she had a bad feeling about this and that nikolai was skinny and twisted and evil and he reminded her of a petrified tree that she saw as a child which we then see for some reason yeah right we didn't need to see it but no. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great line i yes. really appreciated that the line. line the line's great but seeing child needy <laughs> staring at the tree you're like yeah all right <laughs> but nikolai shrugs with a taunting smile at needy then gets into the van We see the van leave the parking lot, driving into the night as Melody Lane continues to burn. Like, I'm not thinking of any of this as comedy. So you got to see why me watching this even. And then this whole thing here, I Uh was like, what the fuck? Because you do. I hated her. Yes. I didn't care. I was like, Jenna, fuck you. (laughs) And then it's like, like you said, for that moment, I was like, is nobody going to get her out of that van? Yeah. Is nobody coming to you? Clearly, this underage girl is being taken away. You know what? It might be. I I feel like this is, again, getting into the social commentary of this film. Mm -hmm. I think the smart thing that Diablo Cody is saying is, yeah, she's mean. Yeah. She said some like fucking off color bullshit. Mm -hmm. But no woman deserves this. Well, no. But I think that's what she's saying by showing that shot. Yeah. And Kusama as well. She's the director. Yeah. Cody just wrote it. But I feel like that's what they're trying to say here. Like, yeah, you hate her, but you also feel for her because nobody deserves what's about to happen. That's why I'm like, it's so many feelings at once. Yeah. You know what I mean? But Needy arrives back home and calls Chip on the phone. Chip answers in bed and Needy tells him that Jennifer is gone. 
He just kind of stays there in bed. Yeah. But when she tells him that Melody Lane burned down, he lurches up out of bed to make sure she's all right. Well, I'm sure Jennifer ditching Needy for yeah. some dude yeah. is not anything new. No. I'm sure, you know. But how did Needy get home? Oh, uh, she probably took the her Jennifer's mom's yeah. car. But wouldn't Jennifer have the keys? Nay, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Devil's Kettle is a small town. Yeah. Oh, she watched. I'm sure she yeah. holds her keys for her, too. Oh, probably. You, you know what? Yeah. She can't fit him in those low-rise nope. jeans. There's oh no God. fucking way. Needy describes the chaotic scene and then shifts gears back to Jennifer being taken to the van. Chip expresses concern at first, but then says there are more important issues considering the fact that people are dead and a boy was crushed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just then, Needy, who is home alone since her mom is working a swing shift, hears someone at the door. I think she means a grave shift. Yeah. I looked up the word swing shift and they say that it's from about two to midnight. Two to 10 where I work. That's what I remember. But I was like, what time is it? Grave starts at 10. Well, the show was at 830 and it ended immediately. (laughs) (laughs) So So it could be nine o'clock. Maybe it's before 10. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But she stays on the phone to investigate. She creeps downstairs in the dark as Chip asks if he should come over. She then rips the door open but finds no one. The camera sweeps out in front of her and we see a shadow moving behind her inside her house. Somewhat calmed down, she tells Chip that she'll call him later and gets off the phone. She heads back inside but when she hears a creak, she makes her way over to a closet, opens it up but finds nothing. She hears another noise coming from the kitchen and cautiously heads inside. Seeing it was just some water dropping from the faucet, she goes to shut it off and when she turns around, she comes face to face with a bloodied Jennifer. (gasps) (laughs) <laughs> i was annoyed at her though because she didn't even lock the door no she yeah. didn't that i was like Mm-mm. well minnesota is close to canada maybe <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no they trust their neighbors but she asks her what happened and jennifer just smiles her teeth blood red great shot very yeah. good shot. yeah i love that a lot but jennifer turns around and opens up the refrigerator snagging a whole ass baked chicken putting it on the floor, tearing pieces of it off, and shoveling it into her mouth. Man, (laughs) if one of my friends did that, (laughs) Seth, I love you, George, whoever, my friends, if you're listening. Don't be doing that. Don't, yeah, don't do that. Yeah. I will sock you in the mouth if you drop my chicken, my rotisserie chicken, yeah. on the floor. Boston Market. Yeah. No, uh, nobody. Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> nobody buys a rotisserie chicken by mistake. No. Yeah, no. There were you plans for that yeah. chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but when Needy tries to get closer to her, Jennifer literally roars at her. It's scary. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. But then Jennifer starts gagging on the chicken, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> But then she starts spitting it out and throwing up a black liquid that looks like the symbiotes from Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, God damn yeah. it, she's Venom. Yeah. <laughs> she's fucking Venom now. <laughs> but she starts to laugh and Needy grabs her hand. Fear finally sets into Needy's face and she runs to her phone. She grabs it in the hall but is shoved against the wall by Jennifer. Jennifer presses up against Needy, sniffing at her and then asks, are you scared? Were you all surprised that she could talk? Jennifer? Yeah, Yeah. because she's growling like a fucking animal, and then she's just like, scared? Yeah. Scared, bro? I was like, (laughs) is there a problem? (laughs) Are you straight? Like, what's what's going on? But Needy nods in tears because, yeah. Yeah. But then Jennifer throws her against the door jam, backs out of the front door, and slams it behind her. We then get shots of the fire department and crime scene examiners picking through the rubble at Melody Lane as one worker discovers another body. In science class the next day, Needy sits catatonic as girls gossip about her and Jennifer fighting their way out of Melody Lane with machetes. (laughs) It's like, how did this get started? (laughs) It's high school, man. Yeah, but that's fucking crazy. I would be honestly, like, not only traumatized because of, you know, I guess being in a fire and seeing that boy get crushed. (laughs) (laughs) Ahmed, we hardly knew you. (laughs) But I'm like she did all this like how am i gonna how how do you explain this chewed up boston market the spiky black shit you know what i mean like you left me with all of this i'd be mad oh yeah traumatized and mad (laughs) traumatized (laughs) the funny thing is that i read that the the vomit was actually made out of hershey's chocolate syrup (laughs) oh wow and so if it didn't have the spines in it i'd probably just think she went through a lot yeah Yeah. but goddamn those spines yeah (laughs) (laughs) they're telling yes they are But Needy flashes back to when she and Jennifer were kids in the sandbox. Little Jennifer, played by Emma Gallego, somehow gets a tack stuck in her palm. 
Little Needy, played by Megan Charpentier, who you may remember from It. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. She takes the tack out of little Jennifer's hand and kisses the wound. She sucks the blood. Well. Yeah. Which I'm like, I know this is supposed to be sweet and like an establishing like a touch point for their relationship or whatever. But if my kids are fucking licking blood off of the, I would be fucking furious. Well, you didn't see yeah. Needy's mom in there. <laughs> <laughs> they cut before Needy's mom's like, what this yeah. fuck are you doing? <laughs> this is why you watch your kids. <laughs> I, I don't think we needed this again. I think it was established enough with what she said earlier. Yeah, yeah that's true. But I think that I think there's some, there's something here being said with, the two girls and blood. I right. think they're they're doing it on purpose. Right. What and not only is, blood, uh, yeah. but needy taking care of you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. Like so it's always been but at the same time it could have just been fine with the line she said earlier. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but back in present day, Jennifer appears looking absolutely normal, greeting needy as monistat once again. Yeah. Great. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Love that for her. <laughs> But Needy's like, what the hell? You know, last night you were all... And Jennifer says that Needy has a history of exaggeration. Mm -hmm. As Jennifer sits down, Needy reminds her that people died last night. And Jennifer just shrugs it off with a sucks for them, I guess. <laughs> Again, yeah. a boy was crushed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, did you not get that memo? Yeah. But Needy asks what's wrong with her. And Jennifer's like, what's wrong with you? Minus the obvious surface flaws. Mm -hmm. It's like, what, what the, the fuck? fuck? Dude? Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. So again, I'm like, she's not a good friend. No. She's and not, this was before whatever happened last yeah. night. Yeah. Right. No, she was a shitty friend before. But I just, I feel like we didn't get a lot of their interactions before whatever happened to Jennifer last night. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, is this... Does she talk to you like this normally? Yeah, that's yeah. true. Because like, so, I would like to know that. Well, I mean, we did hear her say the whole dress cute thing. I know it's yeah. a simple line. Yeah. But the implications of it are so goddamn messed up. Yeah. To me personally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like you're getting just a little bit. And now whatever happened to her last night, she's letting out more and more of it. Yeah. She did throw her against the wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we forget that part. <laughs> But Needy's narration says that she knows it wasn't a dream or anything because she literally stayed up all night cleaning that black vomit. She shows Jennifer her gunked up nails and Jennifer does a casual racism telling her she needs to get a manicure. Yeah, I'm like every other thing out of her mouth is problematic. Yeah. Like literally. It's like the Daniel yep. Tosh right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was 2009. Maybe yeah. he was like, maybe he did. I got a few bangers deal. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. But just then, Mr. Rabluski, their teacher, played by J.K. Simmons, walks in. Not J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> dude, he's yeah. so good. <laughs> I love this dude so much. And he was in Juno, and so it's yeah, like, of course. you know. Yeah. But he sadly details last night's tragedy. Jennifer stifles laughter, making snide remarks about the event as Needy just looks on disgusted. Jonas, a jock played by Josh Emerson, openly sobs and is cradled by an adjacent nerd. <laughs> I'm sorry. God, I don't know. God, what to say. Okay, Jennifer. <laughs> yeah, I know. Jesus. I've been watching this movie too much. <laughs> Next to a fucking, fucking nerd. <laughs> no, well, he was he was a he was an archetypal <laughs> nerd alert. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see the nerd? <laughs> Pardon <laughs> me. But <laughs> He gets handed a tissue by Mr. Rabluski, whose hook hand is played for laughs. I'm, yes, I, I love him. Okay, yeah. Like, yeah. he's great in everything oh, he's yeah. in. Where, <laughs> what were you trying to do with this character? I think they were like, let's just give him a lot of character quirks. He's got Let's funny hair. Let's give him all yeah. the characters. Yeah. What was that it's, wig? It's clearly a wig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was, yeah. I'm disappointed in myself for not bringing yeah. that up earlier. What the fuck is that wig? They're they're just having fun with J.K. Simmons. Yeah. <laughs> he showed up and he's like, I'm game. Yeah. Just whatever. <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> just keep adding shit. <laughs> so confused. But we then see Needy walking through the halls in slow motion, surveying the fallout of the tragedy as Chip joins her. When they reach her locker, she says that she needs to tell him about Jennifer. She tells him everything that happened last night. And Chip says she was probably just sick from the smoke. But Needy says it was like evil. He suggests she talk to a shrink and that everybody's a little messed up after what happened. By what happened, uh, <laughs> what 
the teacher was <laughs> saying in the class was that a teacher fucking died uh-huh. yeah. and eight students died. Uh-huh. So I feel like maybe we shouldn't even be at school today. Oh, yeah. Probably like, not. Just me or like maybe we should cancel for today. Well, yeah. and, and it just demonstrates again how small the town was because Jennifer's like, was it anyone we know? And Needy's like, we know everyone. Yeah. yeah. Like, are you... It's, like, it's devil's, it's devil's lake. fucking yeah. Devil. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> fucking a right it is <laughs> but on their way out they're approached by emo extraordinaire colin gray played by kyle gallner you love to see it yeah. you love to see it dude i feel like kyle gallner does not get the credit he deserves everything i've seen him in he is fucking fantastic <laughs> he's so great in this and him as colin is one of the funniest fucking yeah. characters <laughs> Just the way he, dude, we, we were emo kids. I was going to say, like, literally, I know this guy. Yes, we were in his friend group behind him. Like, that was us. So this is just fucking perfect. But Colin expresses relief that Needy didn't die, and she thanks him before he heads off to join his crew featuring me and Nay, apparently. <laughs> but Chip is jealous of the fact that they know each other, which Needy seems to find adorable and asks if he'll walk her home. Something about this scene, I don't know, really made me miss high school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean that's fair. I don't know it yeah. was, if it was just all the different groups and cliques and everything, but I was like, God damn, I did not cherish that time yeah. at all. Well, he was like, No, fucking not at all, dude. <laughs> but he was like, I thought he only talked to what do you call them, the dead girls or whatever. Yeah. Like he's like, Who the fuck? Why? Why yeah. is exactly. this dude talking to me? All he said was, I'm glad you're not dead. Yeah, yeah. Like, which is like the most basic thing you I can know, say to right? a person. But call the gin blossoms because, hey, jealousy, okay? <laughs> Chip was not trying to hear it. But <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> Thanks. At the football field, we fly over the grass towards Jonas to the tune of Sacred Heart by It Dies Today. Off in the distance, we see Jennifer walking towards him. And I mean the distance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I don't know why, but the shot of her walking towards him with that metal playing was pretty fucking cool. <laughs> I don't know what it was. But he turns his head to see her over there. But when he turns his head back, Jennifer approaches him from the opposite side she was walking from. The fuck? Yeah. She expresses condolences for Craig's death, who Jonas reveals was his best friend. She says that she was the last person to talk to Craig and says that Craig told her that he always thought she and Jonas would make a banging couple. Craig's like, banging? <laughs> That's not how, That's not how Craig God. spoke. <laughs> But she puts his hand on her chest and says to feel her heart and that it's broken. He says that his is too, and she tells him to come with her because it's what Craig would have wanted. He agrees, and they head off together into the woods. This dude is literally just standing there grieving and feeling his feelings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's literally at the football field where him and Craig probably practiced and hung out. Crying and and missing his friend. Yeah. What? Yeah. (laughs) what yeah and we'll talk in a second because i have a point to make that i cannot make yet all right (laughs) but (laughs) in i guess through the trees we see them making out (laughs) my lighter's out there you go she takes off his letterman jacket and he asks why she's so warm she tells him to shut up and they keep kissing it's like all right you got a boss I, mean, <laughs> I felt like that was really interesting actually because i feel like in any other film she'd be cold yes like did anybody else pick up yeah. on that i was a little it yes yeah i thought that was interesting yeah, yeah. like oh okay but literally every animal in the woods gathers around them yeah it's a fucking perverted disney movie yeah. Dude, yes i was like <laughs> Uh, is she a Disney princess? Because, I mean, it's raccoons, rabbits, and a fucking fox, dude. Yeah. Right. And I saw, like, in the gag reel, that was a real fox. Oh, shit. It was very cute. Oh, it wow. was. They showed the trainer feeding it, and I saw it eat, and I want to see it again. <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't that have made it in the film? But Jonas notices it's strange as hell, and Jennifer says, they're waiting. I'm like, mm-hmm. waiting for what? The yeah. show, man. Are they here to watch us? Yeah. Show each other the flesh? God damn. That's how I took it. They're like, what's this now? Yeah, the the woods are boring, man. Yeah. <laughs> we need to see two high schoolers bang. It's like a it's like a movie for us. But she takes her shirt off and rips Jonas's shirt, and then she starts giving him a hand, if you will. <laughs> 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 he needed assistance. Let's just. But she asks if he misses Craig, which yeah, we've already established. Yeah, that. I just said I do. And maybe don't ask me yeah, about my why, dead friend yeah. unless you want things to stop right now. <laughs> But then she says that he'll get to see him soon. He's like, what, in heaven? She says, no, then throws him up against a tree. She walks toward him, her jaw wrenching open to reveal sharp, jagged teeth, and she advances on him. 
looks great. Yes. Yeah. He didn't deserve it. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Like, he literally was coaxed out here. Yeah. Yeah. If there is some history between the two of them, mm-hmm. maybe we can right. figure something out. Right. I'm just like, I don't know. I was waiting for, remember that one time that yeah. Did it, yeah. it just never happened. And I feel like, I mean, I'm first in line. Yeah. Eat the boys. Like I'm uh, right. do it. You know, I'm, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for it. He didn't deserve it. No. He didn't deserve it. It's something that kind of continues. I mean, right. make it, um, starfish lord yeah eat starfish lord you know what i mean he didn't necessarily do anything to deserve being murdered and eaten but he was kind of a piece of shit yeah. just in the few minutes that we knew him he was a Track homophobe him eat, down, him. eat him yeah eat the homophobes yeah i you know 100 percent. but yeah. this dude is mourning his friend yeah. he's feeling his feelings <laughs> yeah dude. no shit fucking leave him alone and <laughs> it was so yeah. weird. He's, he's doing something that dudes are criticized for yeah. doing. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, well, I'm going to fucking eat that guy, right. obviously. I mean, he was extra salty because of the tears, I guess. Yeah. But I'm like, come That's on. That's why man. she's like, mm, you know what I like? <laughs> no. I do want to say that her jaw wrenching open was not entirely CGI. Hmm. She had, I guess, a photo double that they would do the makeup on and then they would kind of composite it together because they made her like a denture Mm -hmm. that Mm. she popped in. And so when they composite it together, it actually looks like there's a scene later that's fucking incredible. Right. But a lot of this stuff was more practical than you would think. Okay. Maybe that's why it looks so good. Yeah. Yeah. It looks great. Because Karin Kusama, she comes from the mindset of, you know, practical effects. Right, right, For sure. She too, man... Oh, shit. I know where you're going. Oh, my God. We're going to have to cover the invitation yes. at some oh, point. Yeah. That's her. Yeah. She did both. She is so good. She's incredible. The and invitation. If y'all yeah. have not seen the invitation, watch I it. think they just took it off of Netflix, but oh. find a way to watch it because that was a good movie. A, it's so yeah. good. And not to derail it anymore, but uh, <laughs> I did read that she's working on a Dracula project. Oh, my God. Oh, I'll be there. All right. I'll be there. I think it's going to be part of like Lee Winnell's new situation with the Invisible Man. Like they're bringing all these. Okay. Universal. Right. Yeah, I'm there. Yes. First in line. Yeah. Yes. Well, maybe third if, if they beat me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but from the parking lot, Mr. Rabluski hears Jonas's cries of pain and he's like, let it out, child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I mean, they are like horrific. Yeah. It's, uh, that's not emotional yeah, pain. No. no, that is physical trauma. But the cries continue and he starts to look concerned. At Nini's house, she's cooking up some fried bologna as her ferret free roams on the floor. Yeah. Now, fried bologna, that's good eating. I was yeah. going to say, thanks a lot. Now I want fried bologna. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> maybe th- maybe it's a class thing, but... Um, <laughs> class uh, thing? No, fried bologna is kind of the shit. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> yeah. It's the best. It is. I remember eat- eating it. <laughs> yeah. I also remember I've, eating it. I've got like a, it's a nostalgic thing for it. Well, oh. like watching her make it, I was like, I know what that smells yeah. like. Like I can. Oh, once it starts no. to, yeah, definitely. Starts it to domes dome up. up. Mm, yeah. You get the crisp bottom. You put that in the middle of a grilled cheese. Oh, oh shit. shit. Yeah. See, now you're taking it to another yeah. level. <laughs> Are we going to talk about Ugly Delicious again? Yeah, I know. God damn. <laughs> David Chang's like, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> oh, Mr. Burns. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> But on the radio, she hears Low Shoulder are being hailed as heroes, saying they helped people escape the flames of last night's tragedy. Nikolai says the people of Devil's Lake are the real heroes. Springton. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And then he uses them to plug the new Low Shoulder album. It's honestly hilarious. Um... They, but they said that eyewitnesses saw them helping. What fucking yeah. eyewitness? He fucking teleported outside with a glass yeah, of whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> you were being fucking Predator Central. Yeah. Yeah. You were not helping anyone. I've got a van outside. Yeah. Oh, you fucking creep. I do want to point out one glaring flaw in this film is we never see that ferret again. Yeah, that's oh, sad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I genuinely, well, in all fairness, in a horror movie, if they introduce an animal, it's probably going to die. That's true. So, yeah, so maybe, maybe it's, a, it's good a good thing, thing yeah. we didn't yeah. see it. I thought Jennifer was going to eat it. I swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> that's like just an appetizer for her, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's like a mint. Is it a boy ferret? <laughs> yeah, that's an after dinner. A boy yeah. ferret? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is that ferret done? <laughs> But back at the school, Mr. Rabluski makes his way into the woods, shrieking in horror as he discovers Jonas's disemboweled corpse being snacked on by a deer. 
I do appreciate that he went to investigate. Yes. Yeah. Because I feel like in another movie it'd be like, oh, I heard I heard him screaming yeah. in the woods. Uh-huh. You know, he went and checked. He did his yeah, due diligence. Yeah. Also, that deer wasted no time. No, yeah. dude. He's like, while well, the getting's good. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I yeah. saw her eating it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Followed. Stands to reason. Yeah. But back at Needy's house, she accidentally drops half of her sandwich, which is rescued by that thankful ferret. Now, yes. I misspoke. This is the last time we see the ferret. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he shows up to eat some fried bologna and then he's gone forever. But uh, Jealous. Yes. Yeah. Hey, jealous. Isn't that my life plan? <laughs> <laughs> But Tony Lesnicki, Needy's mother, played by Amy Sedaris, shuffles into the room and pops a pill with her coffee, saying she had another night terror. Not Jerry Blank. Yeah, man. I was just... Do y'all remember fucking Strangers with Candy? Of course. Yes. Oh, my God. But I was pleased. I I'm couldn't like, what? tell if that was her or not. The yeah. whole it's her. time. Yeah. And I was like, is it? Wait, no. It's Jerry Blank, Wait, man. <laughs> It's a trick because she's actually very pretty. Yes. Man, she puts everything into that character. I just appreciated somebody fucking having parents. Yeah. Yeah, Oh, yeah. Where are y'all's parents? I know your mom works swing shift or whatever. but Which is what? From midnight to Yeah, to midnight. (laughs) (laughs) 24 hour shift. That's what a swing shift is. But Tony says that she dreamt people were trying to stake Needy to a tree like... (laughs) like jc and then she crosses herself <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> super cash oh yeah but she says that she didn't let them get to her though but nini says that she can take care of herself tony says that she's gonna be crying out for her one day and she's not gonna be there well <laughs> yeah i was like god damn <laughs> okay. but the scene just ends yeah. i was like well, that was <laughs> <laughs> all right your morning conversations are rough yeah. <laughs> that's a lot <laughs> yeah but to the tune of Celestial Crown by the Sword, we watch as Jonas's body is taken away to the sounds of his sobbing mother as Officer Warzok, played by Juno Rinaldi, arrives on the scene. I name check her because we don't really see her again, mm-hmm. but I name check her because she plays adult Greta in it. What the fuck? So we have child She's Greta. She's a little uh, needy. Yeah. And adult Greta as this cop. Weirdest fuck. Yeah. yeah. They never saw it coming. No. Nope. <laughs> uh, also, this is sad as fuck. Yeah. I'm like, I really want to enjoy Jennifer doing her thing. Yeah. I can't. Like, I can't. A mother is grieving. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, what the fuck? Well, I think the thing about enjoying it is, I think if we, even if we switch the targets, like, if Jonas was a piece of shit, I don't really know. I'd be like, you raised a piece of shit. I don't care. You're crying. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sad for you, but like, fuck him. And the, yeah, the yeah. fuck him would override. Oh, poor mom. Oh, this, do- <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't. Mm. Doesn't yeah. jive. Doesn't jive. But we watch as Jennifer swims naked through a lake, pulling herself onto a dock. She squeezes the water out of her hair and gets dressed, heading back through the woods. According to entertainment tonight, this was filmed with Megan Fox wearing like a skin colored suit. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And somehow a photographer caught photos of her coming out of the lake and she had to beg producers to keep these photos from popping up on Perez Hilton's website. Oh my God. That but, fucking dude. Man. But it popped up anyway. Of course it did. Damn. And so like it just demonstrates this fucking tabloid fascination with Megan Fox how it hurt the film mm-hmm. at the time of its release. Right. But it's not at all her fucking fault. It's no. not. In that interview that made me like apparently fall in love with her. I don't know. I'm like, oh, no. what, what is happening here? <laughs> yeah. She was literally like, what did I ever do? It's the saddest. And I'm like, what did, what did you ever do? <laughs> all she ever did. You were in a shitty movie. Yeah. Okay. Name somebody who didn't do a shitty movie. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like, wow i think that's what <laughs> yeah. just, that really just put it in perspective for me that's what really sucks is she's got some kind of reputation that she does not deserve no it's just it's so bizarre she literally just worked like that's yeah. it yeah. that's and all she did it's one of those things where it's like you know it's such like a mom answer oh they're they don't like you because you're pretty or they're yeah, yeah. no like literally i think that's we it we hated her because she was pretty <laughs> it's, it's the fu- it's the weirdest fucking I, I don't know. I could really write a thesis yeah. about America's relationship with Megan right. Fox. It is the weirdest fucking thing ever. And the thing is, is not just to piggyback on what you're saying, but watching that interview, 
She seems like one of the most genuine people yes. I've ever seen in my entire yeah. life. And it just sucks so bad. No, it's a huge bummer that she had to go through any of this. And you know what sucks the worst is that she was fucking killing it professionally, but she couldn't enjoy any of it. Oh, no. Because of the fucking Perez Hilton fucking scumbag piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's okay. I, Let, it out. It infuri- Let it out. <laughs> it infuriates me. Well, I know that's shitty, man. It's yeah. awful. I don't know how many times I've heard you use the term scumbag. <laughs> I don't know either. Wow. Just, I don't even know that I. <laughs> it's not even part of my well, normal insult. But if it had to be yeah. used, I yeah. mean, now's the time. That's Fucking, when you know it's, it's yeah. serious. Yeah. Oh, shit. He's saying scumbag. Yeah. <laughs> scumbag? That guy really sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. But that night, Anidi watches more stuff on her computer about the tragedy. Jennifer calls her on the phone saying that she's feeling fucking electric. Anidi says she's feeling depressed about everything that happened. And Jennifer just tells her to move on. And she's like, you know what? You should actually be happy for me. It's like, for yeah. what? <laughs> Jennifer seems great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Anidi gets a call from Chip on the other line and switches over, which earns her another crossing out from Jennifer. Chip, over the sound of his little sister Camille, played by Nicole LaDuke, playing a toy piano, tells Needy to meet him at McCollum Park in 10 minutes. Needy switches back to Jennifer, who we see is sticking her tongue out and burning it with a lighter. Mm -hmm. Iconic. That's such a fucking iconic shot. That was my, that's exactly what I was about to say. It's so fucking cool. Yeah. You see her tongue turn black at the tip and then it turns back to pink. And she goes, I am a god. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's fucking funny. And again, it's so good. I'm telling you, nobody else could have played this character. No, no. And the way that she hits these lines with these jokes in them, (laughs) it's perfection. It's so good. But Needy tells Jennifer that she has to go meet Chip. And when Jennifer asks about the size of his dong, Needy rushes off the phone. Can I say dong? Sure. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's too late. I already said it. But what's Um, that about? I, I really got nothing. Uh, I mean, I'd be pissed off. And at this point, looking at my notes, this is when I'm like, was she always a shitty friend? Yeah. Again. Because, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> it's just, I, I really don't know how to unpack how I'm feeling because it feels at the beginning that Needy is very much at her beck and call. Right. And at this point, she's like, oh, about, you know, Chip's dick though. And she's like, goodbye. Yeah. So I'm like, is she fed up is this just what it's been and she's over it right or is jennifer like really stepping over these lines enough that even needy is like fuck off yeah so i don't i really don't know i wish we could have seen a little bit more of their dynamic you know pre man eater right, right. you know <laughs> <laughs> you know that's a good question because honestly even whenever she came to pick needy up for the concert she said hi to Chip, but it was like a reluctant hi. Yeah. yeah. If she had said something like slightly more charmingly or seductively, yeah, yeah. then maybe we have this history of her trying to try something with Chip. Yeah. And then this yeah. line is like, God damn it, Jennifer's on her bullshit that's again. That's enough. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. enough. So but, it's just... No, that's fair. It's odd. I just wish I understood their dynamics a little bit more because that's some bullshit. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. some fucking... That's some bullshit, yeah. Jennifer. <laughs> Maybe take out the swimming scene and put something <laughs> that matters <laughs> for the movie. That matters. I thought those shots think, were very yeah. beautiful. No, those are great oh, okay, shots. Okay, but what, oh, why do I need to see her swimming? Well, you because don't. Well, first of all, she <laughs> has to wash the blood off of her and then she has to get changed because she was in the water. Well, she put her same clothes on. <laughs> well, all right. Which should be bloody. (laughs) Well, no, she took her shirt off to eat him. She was thinking ahead. I guess. Leave him in. (laughs) The the point is she just, she needs to chickity check herself. That's all I'm trying to say. I agree. But at the park, Chip tells Needy about what happened to Jonas up to and including his disemboweling and says it looks like someone ate parts of him as well. She's like, and it's got deer bites in him. (laughs) But Needy says that this can't be a coincidence considering everything that happened with the fire and Jennifer's weird behavior. Chip shivers, saying that he hopes things get better from here on out, and they share a kiss. She offers him her jacket, which I thought was so fucking adorable. So cute. Yes, I I love this couple. Of course, Through the Trees starts playing. (laughs) (laughs) My lighter. There you go. And we get a shot of the school hallway filled with downcast students all dressed in black and gray. Needy says that as the days passed, everyone continued on feeling numb, except for Jennifer. 
we see her walking through the hallway dressed in bright pink in like hearts on her jacket smiling and just flipping her hair yeah you know she looks fabulous it's great <laughs> <laughs> But I loved the juxtaposition in the in her colors and the yes. colors of everyone around yeah. her. Um, I did. I don't know if it was in that interview or something else that I saw, but I guess they had to like send pieces of the film like for, you know, keep going or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I read dailies. They call them dailies. That's okay. what those are. I read that. Not to be an asshole, it just came to me. I don't make films. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Maybe one day. I read, or I heard, God damn it, I heard that um, they said in the interview that this was one of the first things they filmed because they knew that they were, they needed this to get in the door. The green light. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Which fucking like, I love well, this shot because it it does mean something. Right. But I hate that that's what it had to be. You, we need Megan Fox looking super fantastic, walking in slow motion down the hallway. Yeah. Well, that is but so annoying. The thing is, is when the note you get from the marketing department is Megan, Megan Fox, Fox hot. hot. Yeah. You, they you know what, it what they were is. up yeah. against. I just hate. I hate that for them. No, it sucks a lot. Yeah. And. I love how fucking smart they were about it. I mean, yeah. They're like, yeah, send it in and then do whatever the fuck we yeah. want. Yeah. <laughs> That's so good for them, but bad that they're in that situation. Yep. Yeah. But Needy explains that Devil's Kettle gained notoriety for the fire and Jonas's death, and the press just couldn't get enough. We see a candlelight vigil as teens somberly sing along to Through the Trees. <laughs> <laughs> and we close in on a shot of a shrine to Jonas as the flowers surrounding a photo of him wilt and die before our very eyes. Very cool way to show the passage of time. Yes. Mm-hmm. I thought that was very neat. But Needy says that the town of Devil's Kettle was healing and they had faith that things would get better. But then she says they were fucking idiots. We're then taken to class where in a speech to the science class, we learn from Mr. Robluski that it's been one month since the fire... <laughs> And Jonas' murder. Why are you laughing? (laughs) (laughs) Is it J.K. Simmons? Yes. I don't don't get what they were doing with him. (laughs) No. (laughs) He makes me laugh because there's one line that he has because everything he says is so fucking sincere. But he's like, we need to move past (laughs) worrying who's cool who is a hoe <laughs> yeah. because he has the Minnesotan accent. It's yeah. like so good. It's so funny though, because you know, fucking, do you remember when you were in school and teachers would yes. say shit yeah. like that? They were like, trying to be cool. You're ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like as off the wall as her shit has been that we've called out. That was so yeah. on yeah. point. It was <laughs> like ridiculously accurate. <laughs> Cause that's when you look at your friends, like, she just fucking yeah. say ho? <laughs> like it's, that's so funny. But Jennifer spouts out, boring and a girl behind her is like jesus (laughs) (laughs) jennifer looks actually quite worn out as much as fucking megan fox can look worn out yeah quoting from my notes jennifer looks like shit well as shitty as megan fox can look (laughs) (laughs) that's it it's difficult it's true it's like we were saying with jennifer love hewitt yeah i know what you did last summer it's like i know we're supposed to think she looks awful but but it's also jennifer love hewitt (laughs) but jennifer kind of just like puts her head in her hands and just rests it's very odd right yeah like what's going on with her because she was just happy as fuck walking out dude was that (laughs) that was a month ago yeah (laughs) but after that rude interruption mr rabluski shares the good news Considering Through the Trees has become something of an unofficial <laughs> anthem for Devil's Kettle, Low Shoulder has decided, out of the goodness of their hearts, to release the song as a benefit single with 3% of the profits going to local families. I laughed yeah. out loud. Yeah. It's, again, the sincerity that he says it. <laughs> with 3%. 3%. <laughs> <laughs> fucking I fucking, That killed me. That killed me. Needy thankfully is like yeah what about the other 97 (laughs) percent chastity who is wearing a low shoulder t-shirt over her (laughs) button-up t-shirt says that low shoulder are american heroes needy calls bullshit and before she fucking gets in a tussle with chastity mr rabluski breaks it up the bell rings and needy notices that jennifer doesn't look herself jennifer says that she feels like shit her skin's breaking out and her hair's breaking off she says she feels like one of the normal girls. Again. Yeah. She's great. <laughs> Just the best, guys. But as they walk down the hall, Jennifer says she thinks it's wearing off. Needy's like, what? 
But before she can get any kind of answer, Colin walks up to them. After a micro chat about homework, Colin awkwardly gives it away that he wants to ask Jennifer out, which he does. It annoyed me with Jennifer being like, do your pitch. Yeah. yeah. She's a bitch, I was dude. like, you're, you, you're mean. I yeah. would just leave. I'd yeah. Like, For, forget it. Absolutely. But he says that there's a showing of Rocky Horror coming up soon, but Jennifer declines because she doesn't like boxing movies. <laughs> dude, Nadie looks embarrassed to be alive. Yeah. <laughs> And Colin's like, you box- fuck it, forget yeah. it. He literally yeah. says, fuck well, it, yeah. and, <laughs> and he leaves. That's the only response. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do, you, I mean, what do you say to that? Like, oh, All wow. right, we're clearly yeah. not yeah. compatible. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. That's fine. But he walks off, and Needy's like, you know, Colin's really nice, and Jennifer just savages him and his emo lifestyle. I think she says something very insensitive, but I can't remember. I just be- remember being like, God damn, Jennifer. Yeah. Is she talking? Uh, yeah. And she said yeah. something insensitive. Oh, okay, okay. Fair enough. Good. I'm glad we've cleared, <laughs> cleared that up. <laughs> but after Needy says that she thinks that he's really cool, Jennifer relents and calls Colin back, telling him to meet her at her place tonight. Colin is elated, and she says that she'll text him her address. Colin. He's just a nice guy. Yeah. Leave him alone. But when Jennifer turns around, she sees Needy chatting with Chip at her locker. She gives a very flirtatious, hi, Chip, which makes Needy kiss him to, I guess, mark her man. Mm-hmm. Belle Bell Jolie. Jolie. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> before we get into their conversation, okay, I want to point out, because I feel like this film does a lot. Yes. And the more that I think about it, the more I'm kind of putting together, oh, I see... I see what you were doing here. I see what you were doing here. Mm -hmm. And this whole thing with Colin to me was a little bit of a breadcrumb to how toxic some female relationships Mm -hmm. can be. Right. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, fuck his emo ass, like fuck off. And then Needy's like, I think he's cool. Oh wait, Colin. Yeah. Yeah. You just want him because you're friend. Exactly. Like that's fucked up. Like that is. And I I know, I know you said relationships between women, but I do want to point out that it is kind of universal. I had I had a friend in high school that literally, if I would tell him about a girl that I liked, he would intentionally try That's to date disgusting. her. That's disgusting. Because I, I didn't liked know that her. you guys did that too. Because yeah. in high school, girls was, totally yeah. did that. And I was like, "What the fuck, man?" <laughs> but the thing, the thing is, is that again, much like needy is supposed to be presented as, I didn't have the confidence to stick up for myself in that. Right. And so it really is just this weird, toxic relationship. Yeah, that guy wasn't your friend. No, he was not. <laughs> no, he. No, no. Uh, I mean, that's mean. <laughs> it's just it's fucked up. And I feel like if you're not paying attention, it could be easy to mi- like, I mean, obviously we see it happening, but right. it can be easy to miss how fucking deep that was. Yeah. That oh, yeah. And only that. And also you're like, it's wearing off. Like, that means I need another one. And even still, you're like, no, fuck that yeah, guy. Yeah. That's some bullshit. And like, that is some bullshit. There's something to be said about knowing your self-worth because in these situations with Jennifer, Needy's probably like, well, of course, you know, Colin would date, would want to date her. Yeah. Yeah. But in reality, it's not about Colin. It's about Jennifer fucking sucking. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe I'm, (laughs) maybe I'm venting a little bit. No. You're like, and then this fucking guy. Yeah. And then my friend. (laughs) Redacted. Yeah. (laughs) If you hear a bleep, it's because. (laughs) You're working through some shit. It's okay. Also, don't tell people the girls you like, maybe. No. I have friends that you can tell. That's a better. That that wasn't on you. Fuck fuck redacted. Okay. That's a better lesson. (laughs) Be around quality people. I'll try. (laughs) But. Chip is initially jealous, thinking that Needy was talking to Colin, but then he's surprised to learn that Colin was actually asking Jennifer out. Yeah, he lights up like a Christmas tree. He's like, oh, good. (laughs) Phew! Because, come on, Colin was the shit. He was very cool. (laughs) He was a cool dude. But he then asks if Needy's going to come over tonight, and he lets it slip that he bought condoms at Super Target. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That... (laughs) the best line in the whole movie that's a great line (laughs) it's so good because it's so real yes Yes. do you want to know why that line works for me super target (laughs) yes it wasn't just target but i remember and i know this is a small detour but Uh we when we first visited a super target Uh uh-huh when we had went to was it the first time we went to comic-con yeah oh yeah we were amazed we were like we were were country bumpkin yeah yeah 
y'all have a fucking grocery here? <laughs> we were like, oh my God. Well, Target doesn't do that. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Not our Target. Not our fucking super, shitty Target. Super Target. Super Target. Groceries and condoms, yeah. okay? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> it's a one-stop shop. But the Super Target condoms seem to sweeten the deal. <laughs> <laughs> that night, Chip sets the mood with some soft indie music and a jammin' jasmine air freshener. And he's on his bed <laughs> with Needy and they begin to make out. As Needy takes her jacket off, the music switches to Screeching Weasel's punk cover of I Can See Clearly, and then we cut to Colin driving his car, singing along in his best Tom DeLong. Yes. Yeah. I was like, literally, is this me in my car? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> listening to my music. Whenever I'm singing in my car, I'm like, I hope everybody else on the road is enjoying this as much as I am, <laughs> because I am enjoying it. But we cut to Needy and Chip taking their shirts off and, you know, carrying on. But Colin looks around and sees nothing but empty and dilapidated houses. Mm -hmm. He looks back to his text from Jennifer, pulling up to the address she told him to. He sees a candle burning in the window, and in a neat long shot, we see him get out of the car and approach the house on the lightless street. I do want to point out, not to give a lot away, but in an interview I did see that Kusama said that this scene of colin singing the song Mm -hmm. on his way to the house of whatever happens to him yeah right um she said was her answer to the woman singing an american girl in silence of the lambs oh shit all right so i was like that's a really that's great actually it's a neat reference i thought but i do want to point out that this place is fucking fenced off it's horrifying Yeah. yeah it's it's very scary i don't know if it's just a commentary on dudes being dumb Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I would be terrified. Yeah. You come to the car. Yes. We yes. Can, there's I'll nobody looking. You. Yeah. Yeah. I there's nobody <laughs> looking. <laughs> I'm not going inside that fucking house. No. <laughs> but listen, okay. Teenage boys. I know. Hormones I know. and such. This is one hundred percent what you said. This it's, is a yeah. subversion. Because if this was a teenage girl. And she pulled up and went in that house. I'd be like, yeah. this is fucking bullshit. But I believe this. I definitely believe. Did you see how fucking hyped that dude was in the car? Dude, he, he can, can see, see all the now. obstacles <laughs> in his way. <laughs> the, my dude is hyped. Okay. Yeah. He's going in that house. The funniest thing to me is like, okay, the music grows eerie as Colin heads to the front door. Right. And when he knocks on it, it's boarded up. Yeah, oh no. <laughs> and no, that no. doesn't stop him. Yeah, no, no. I was like, Colin. I know better than that. No. Yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hell no. I'm 17 year old you. There. I don't know. You can't mm. convince me. You can't, you can't convince, convince me. me. You, can't, <laughs> you wow. can't convince me. Look, I, I didn't want to say this. Oh, God. But you're really telling me she's the the prettiest girl in the whole school. No other girl is pretty that you, that you well, want or whatever. Or you Jennifer's talk the to. it girl. There's no more. Well, it's just her. There's no, but, no more. <laughs> there, that's it. Well, but here's the deal, though, is that that's the thing that kind of is universal with every high school ever is that there's some weird hierarchy. Even if oh, there are. Course. I get that. But even if there are girls that, you know, some people might find more conventionally attractive, there's always that one it girl. And if you can date that it girl, then you're it. Not only, not only ah. that, not and, and you're right, but not only that. I mean, going back to that hierarchy, which is bullshit. But yeah, of course. Jennifer's Jennifer, and I'm a weird emo boy. What is happening? Like, who the fuck no, am no, I to not I, go in I this get house? That. Yeah, but I get that. What Colin doesn't understand is he's cool as shit. You're cool, Colin. <laughs> you're way fucking cooler than Jennifer. Yeah, she's been kind of <laughs> racist all film. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy you guys hyping him up. That's, I love that's him. funny. He's cool. That's, <laughs> that's funny. funny. Well, well, we got to represent our kind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was just a little different and uh-huh. when I went to high school. And I mean, yeah, we did have the little clicks or whatever. But I mean, it was always groups. It wasn't just okay. like one person sat on the throne and, and, and was and like, I, I, I get, there was an actual throne. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, stereotypically, T, but we went to a giant fucking high school. We there did. wasn't just one girl. But there but there there wasn't just one girl, but there was one girl that we all knew everybody liked. I mean, I guess and it, it was me. No. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, it was it was the same thing because you got it would be the homecoming queen. Right, it would be, right, right. They would win. There was a line in Young Adult from again Diablo. I was Cody. like, didn't Diablo Cody? <laughs> yeah, that? where one of the characters talks about she's like, 
asking Patton Oswalt's character if he mm-hmm. won an award because she won like Homecoming Queen or some shit. And he's like, well, there were about 25 awards for all the students and the same five people won all of I them. Mean- <laughs> that's basically, <laughs> that's that's the hierarchy. I love Patton Oswalt. Yeah, that's a good movie though, by the way. And not just because Diablo Cody wrote it. <laughs> or Charlize <laughs> Theron's in it. She's great. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> He knocks on that door and gets no response. He then walks around to the side of the house, jumping in through one of the windows covered by plastic sheeting. I'd be like, okay, I'm about to get Dextered. Yeah. For sure. (laughs) Instead, he just continues on. (laughs) He calls out to Jennifer in the dark and gets no answer. I want to love you by Akon starts to play. I was like, do not bring Akon into this. You leave him alone. I believe this is the censored version. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, because he wants to love her. Yeah, he wants to show the flesh, if you will. (laughs) (laughs) But he heads up to the attic, frightened by a raven on the way. Again, Jennifer with these fucking animals popping up out of nowhere. Yeah. Perverted Disney. Oh, God. I don't know why I was so afraid. Oh, my God. (laughs) But back at Chip's place, he and Needy are naked in bed together, and he's trying to open the condom with his teeth. (laughs) He's like, this is a slippery squirrel (laughs) condom. He's like, they said it was supposed to be good for the women. (laughs) It's like, Chip's a good guy, okay? He is. And I... uh, He's he's trying. Yeah. Their relationship, especially sexually, because I feel like in these archetypal situations, Needy shouldn't want to have sex and right, right. maybe chip is trying to pressure her and she's like oh i'm not comfortable they're both very comfortable with oh, each no, other yeah. yeah he's like i went to super target we got condoms like he's <laughs> like it's very it's not weird it's not no. awkward like they seem very like just comfortable and everybody's having a great time is yeah. what it feels like and i appreciate that because i feel like in another verge virgin oh my god no. I mean, talk about a fucking, no, Freudian, fucking slip. Freudian yeah in another version of this needy is the virgin and yeah. she's not comfortable and that's the thing is that in a in a lesser screenwriter's hands needy doesn't have a boyfriend no yeah needy, all the boys want jennifer needy likes colin jennifer dates colin you know what yeah. i mean oh yeah i just i appreciate how they're they're complex. Intimacy is portrayed. Right. Yeah. Because it's not weird. It's not horny and like gross. They're just, you get, they're enjoying yeah. each yeah. other. You they get, seem very comfortable. I just yeah. appreciated that. Chip is a sweet dude. He is. Yeah, I think he's my favorite character. I don't I mean, think I don't, that's wrong. I don't blame you. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> After Colin. <laughs> <laughs> but back at the abandoned house, Colin enters a room filled with candles. Got to call out the nice blue and orange color palette. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You have to. I have to. It's expected of me. But he looks around smiling, but he's startled by Jennifer when she enters the room. He's like, this isn't your house, is it? (laughs) I hope not. Yeah, (laughs) goddamn. It's boarded up. It's condemned. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But she says it's their house. And as she takes off her sweater, she says they can play mommy and daddy. She gets close to him and he's like, you don't even know my last name. Yeah. That hurt. Yeah. I was like, man, yeah. <laughs> him alone saying that. This isn't the dude. This yeah. isn't no. like, leave him alone. Like, he's not here just for this. No. Yeah. He wanted to take you to see Rocky Horror Picture yeah. Show. Yeah, he's trying to Marry let, you, him. let you into his world. <laughs> What's wrong with you? But she says that she's been sending him signals all year, saying she, he gives her a quote, weddy, unquote. I'm like, some of these lines we just gotta Yeah. <laughs> we just gotta no. get, get past it, get past it. <laughs> but she starts to kiss his neck. This contrasts with the scenes of Needy and Chip making it the sweetest of the sweet. Showing uh-huh. each other the flesh. See, this I don't consider showing each other the flesh. I think this is adorable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all showing each other the flesh. There's just is it different different yeah (laughs) so is it like showing each other the flesh and showing each other each other the the flesh flesh. yeah they're just showing each other the flesh just casual Mm -hmm. but colin gets startled by rats in the abandoned house and jennifer's like i thought you guys were like into death and vermin and shit and then she just tears off his pants yeah cool yeah after they kiss a little more jennifer's eyes turn white colin's like no way then her eyes just turn back to normal man it looked really cool though it did it looked but great. i'm like run yeah, yeah i gotta go home there's a window yeah. right there run. swan dive out of that motherfucker yes. <laughs> swan dive. <laughs> but he backs away from her and cuts his hand on some kind of loose metal 
the house is fucked, all right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> explain. But she grabs both of his arms and snaps the bones and throws him to the floor, saying that she needs him frightened. While Needy and Chip continue to make it sweet, I guess show each other the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Needy looks up to the ceiling where she sees blood collecting. As it drips onto her, she reaches at her own face, but there's nothing there. She looks over to the corner of the room where she sees Jonas seated, smiling, staring at her with his guts ripped open, and Jennifer sits perched above him like a fucking gargoyle. Yeah. Yeah. Needy starts making frightened noises, and (laughs) Chip smiles because he thinks he's doing a bang-up job. (laughs) Poor thing. I know. He's like, hell yeah. He's like, yeah, man. But in the abandoned house, Jennifer crouches over Colin, telling him she needs him hopeless. Her eyes go white again, and in the shadows, we see her jaw open up as she tears Colin apart, his blood spraying everywhere. I turned the movie off, so I don't know how it ends. <laughs> You're like, this is goddamn Helen Shivers all over again. <laughs> I'm sad. <laughs> I I love this silhouette shot. Yeah. Because if we were if we do the every murder the same, it gets boring. Oh, for mm. sure. And it it did look really cool. Yeah. yeah. It just sucks that it was it's Colin. It's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is Jennifer a scumbag? She's a yeah. fucking scumbag, man. But Needy, still banging, whispers <laughs> hopeless over and over, and eventually it gets a little too spicy for the pepper, and they stop doing it. Why? With- <laughs> I'd be like, why are you saying hopeless? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, am I doing awful? That's what I... <laughs> I was like, there's no way you don't hear that. Yeah. I know that's not a good sign. It's like, that's not a word you want to hear. No. This is hopeless. Hopeless. Like, wait, what? what? Yeah. what? <laughs> Let's talk about this. But she starts panting and Chip asks if he did something wrong. It was funny because earlier when she was making the scared noises, he was like, am I too big? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Chip, you're fucking hilarious. I love this dude. Protect Chip at all costs. At all costs. Well, since Colin's gone. <laughs> But in the abandoned house, a rat crawls over Colin's dead face as Jennifer scoops blood from his abdomen and drinks it with her hands. Well, not with her hands, I guess from her hands. (laughs) She She does not have tiny mouths in her hands. No. But we get a shot of Colin's hand holding a Catholic rosary. I thought that was very odd. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. No. If I'm honest with you. But I guess it gives more character to Colin. Or, yeah, more character to Colin. Or, like, maybe because she was like, I'm God or I'm a God or whatever. Oh. And she, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. You're trying. <laughs> You're doing your best. real hard. God, Rosary, you know? Yeah. Like, clear line. Same thing. Right. But we then see Needy rushing out of Chip's house to her car. She turns the key and through the trees blasts out the radio. <laughs> <laughs> and she shuts it off exasperated. She drives out of the neighborhood and later on some empty road, she sees Jennifer scurrying out of the woods like an animal. Jennifer stands in the middle of the road covered in blood and Needy swerves to avoid hitting her. She looks around only for Jennifer to jump on the hood of the fucking car, smashing the windshield. Why does Jennifer keep wrecking her shit? Yeah. I don't know. You're eating my fucking Boston market. You're cracking <laughs> my fucking shit. It started there. Yeah. I am like, I. this friendship is bullshit. Yeah, you're yeah. not my friend. No. No. Yeah. no. Friends don't eat each other's Boston market. <laughs> we had plans for that chicken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Needy backs out of there and speeds home. Once inside her house, she calls out to her mom, who isn't there. It's almost Working like the they, yeah. they sweat it. They set that up. Right. Yeah. Which is a little clunky. If you think yeah. about it. One night you're going to call out to me and I'm, I'm going to be <laughs> not. Yeah, I'm going to be working tomorrow night. Yes. Yeah. I mean, tomorrow night. But Needy curls up into a ball and sobs on the couch. She relives a montage of creepy Jennifer moments, ending with the shot of Nikolai closing the van door on the night of the fire. I do want to say I understand that they're best friends. How did she get these visions? I feel like that was established with the whole Jennifer's here. Okay. I feel like we they have some weird freaky connection and that would John Paul's eyes are yeah. closed. Hey, and he's wait, shaking his wait, head. no, because you're right. What if that what if that was sucking of the blood? What if there's some like supernatural element there? Well, mom, I, like I said before, told me that don't if you drink it. No. Well, she said your own blood, yeah. but I'm sure it's not going to drink anybody else's blood either. It's like, can I drink my friend's blood? Yeah, go, yeah. go ahead. Load up. Yeah. She said it makes you evil. It does. <laughs> John Paul's like, what the fuck is happening? Sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, you got a boss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad JP's got an open mind. Yeah. <laughs> 
But still in the night, Needy wakes up on the couch and heads to her bedroom to get some real sleep. As she lies down in bed, she realizes someone's already in there. I'm like, what's this Goldilocks shit? (laughs) (laughs) Of course, it's Jennifer. Needy jumps out, turning on the lights with a scream, telling Jennifer to get out. Jennifer, wearing Needy's Evil Dead t-shirt and mm-hmm. panties. Yeah, I know, right? Evil Dead. I have those same panties. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I wasn't about the yeah, Evil Dead. That was... <laughs> but Jennifer reminds Needy that they always share her bed when they have their slumber parties. Now, I do want to point out that Fede Alvarez's remake of Evil Dead came out four years later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Diablo Cody did uncredited rewrites on that film. Oh, shit. So it's an it's an odd Easter egg that wasn't an Easter egg yet. Right. Yeah. Like, like with Dante, yeah. what, Dante, yeah. like at Dawson's Beach. Yeah. yeah. Like that wasn't even a show it's yet. Like, this will mean some shit <laughs> in a few years. But Jennifer promises Needy that she won't bite and starts to play with her hair. She leans in and they share a long kiss. There's like a massive close up on the two of them making yeah. out. The thing is, is that I feel like there's a purpose for it in the film, but I feel like this is nothing but fodder for people to use in the trailer yeah to tell their friends to go see it because these two girls make out right but it's such an important moment for needy and jennifer i i don't know please convince me because my issue is and the shot was beautiful yeah y'all go for it like i love that for them Mm -hmm. my thing is at this point in the film after what needy has just seen and after her vision and everything, I don't think that she's got a wedding right now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like maybe earlier, maybe this happens earlier in this kind of, because I feel like there's almost this from that uh, fucking bitch that was calling her a lesbian or whatever at the mm-hmm. beginning uh-huh. from there, there's almost this. And then them holding hands at the bar. There's this underdeveloped, do we kind of, is there something here? Yes. Right. But it's never like confirmed or denied. So maybe a moment of uh, when they're going to the bar or like something. Okay. Yeah. Have them kiss. That's great. Love it. I don't think it fits right here. From, I think she's horrified. And she is. But the thing is, is here, here's two things. First of all, what we learn later about Jennifer, it makes even more sense to me that this would happen. But it's like you're saying, they've been setting up this possible romance between Mm -hmm. these two the entire film. Yeah. And so there has to be some kind of payoff for those little moments. Eventually, it has to lead to something bigger. And this is the bigger moment. I read that there was like a huge sex scene that got cut out. And that's very interesting to me. Uh, Maybe it probably would have gone right here. Oh, for sure. But what we learn about Jennifer, it makes a lot of sense that even despite everything, she would be very alluring to Needy right now. Okay. All right. You've half convinced me. <laughs> I've made, I've, I've creamered. <laughs> I've, co- <laughs> yeah. I've coffee creamered. Yes. You're half and half. Yes. It's just, I, I just feel like Needy is smarter than this. But I guess if it's some kind of, you know, situation that we're about to learn about where she can't really help herself, then okay, I guess. But then that undermines the relationship that's kind of been building. But I, so feel, I don't know. I'm torn. I feel <laughs> like what it is, is it is allowing her to act on the smaller feelings that she's had inside of her. It's kind of releasing her inhibitions in this moment. There's stuff that's been dormant throughout probably their entire friendship. Mm-hmm. I guess. I just feel like it's more of, I don't know. I guess. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it alone. I guess. All right. Sure. <laughs> yeah. You're <laughs> JP now. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. Well, uh, sure. I took it as kind of, I guess, the way you you took it. Hmm. That later, you, yeah. should, you know what I mean? That's kind of how I took it, too. I guess. I just felt like that was more like like boy, oh, boys yeah. are stupid. Well. I don't know. Continue, <laughs> please. I think it's a little column A, a little column B. All right. Yeah. Coffee creamer. Right. <laughs> half and half. But they then crawl into bed and start making out. And it's like deathly silent. Mm-hmm. The tension grows until it boils over and Needy throws herself off of Jennifer with a what the fuck? She's like, dude, I saw you in the road. Yeah. <laughs> You're not like, just going to gloss over that. No. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking scurried through the trees. Yeah. <laughs> through the trees. <laughs> Where's your lighter? <laughs> but she's like, I should call the police. Jennifer says that she has the cops in her back pocket because she's banging Chris Pratt. But it's like, he still has one month left yeah. in the right. academy. He can't do shit, but go off. Needy's like, what do you want with me? 
Jennifer says that she just wants to explain things to her and takes us back to the night of the fire, saying that low shoulder are totally evil and basically agents of Satan with (laughs) really awesome haircuts. (laughs) (laughs) But back on that night in the van, we see Jennifer seated on the floor. She asks Nikolai where they're going, and he tells her that she doesn't have to talk if she doesn't want to. I'm like, she's talking because she wants to. Right. But Jennifer looks around and sees a ton of occult books and iconography, and fear starts to set in. I love that those are just out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they even hide them. Like, Jesus. They were like Does studying that, on their way to the gig. have to be scattered everywhere? Yeah. <laughs> How else would she know? But her eyes well with tears. One of the band members is like, are you sure she's a virgin, dude? Yeah. Jennifer lies and says that she is definitely a virgin and they should find somebody else who knows how to have sex because she does not. Yeah. It's just so fucking sad. Yeah, Yeah. man. Like, it's so sad. It really is. But they drive Jennifer out to the falls, get out of the van, and Nikolai grabs her when she tries to run away. He looks up to the sky and remarks that they have a waxing moon tonight, just like the ritual said. They carry Jennifer crying and screaming to the side of that waterfall and tie her arms with rope. Dirk is suddenly unsure, but Nikolai asks him, do you want to be a barista forever or do you want to be rich and awesome like that guy from Maroon 5? That's <laughs> hilarious. Obviously, Dirk says Maroon 5. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. Dirk snags him a printout of the ritual, which Nikolai says that he found online. He reads, we come here to sacrifice the body of... And after getting her name from her, motherfucker thought her name was Tiffany. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He says they come here tonight to sacrifice the body of Jennifer from Devil's Kettle. Jennifer begs for her life and Nikolai levels with her. He's like, look, you know how hard it is to make it as an indie band? The market is saturated as fuck. And if you don't get on Letterman or on a soundtrack, you're screwed. So logically, they turn to the devil. (laughs) That's genuinely hilarious. Yes. And I can feel like, John Paul, if you're not like, that's funny. I can see you being like, that's the dumbest fucking shit I've ever heard in my life. Love it. Love it. Good. (laughs) I'm glad. But he says, since they turn to the devil, they have to make an awesome first impression. He goes, we're going to butcher you and bleed you. And then Dirk here is going to wear your face. He goes, I'm kidding about the face, but the rest is going to (laughs) happen. Adam Brody is just so funny. He's so good in this. But as he takes the ceremonial dagger, he says that maybe they'll write a song about her. He goes, that'd be pretty cool as a fan, right? Yeah. It's like, dude, you are fucking crazy. (laughs) Read the room. (laughs) Yeah. But he holds the knife over her and says, with the deepest malice, we deliver this virgin unto thee. He brings the knife down, but stops. Realizing that her name is Jennifer, the group starts to sing 8675309 by Tommy (laughs) Two-Tone. Why? (laughs) I guess to show that this They're, is so whatever to yeah, them. Yeah, like they do not give a fuck. No. Nikolai using the knife as a microphone the whole time, which I thought was kind of, yeah. of course. <laughs> but when they hit the chorus, he brings the knife down into Jennifer over and over again. Jennifer screams as the group laughs and the screen fades to white. This scene right here, I'm like, to anyone who says that she's a shitty actress. Yes. I... This is so well done. I don't know how people still talk shit about her after mm-hmm. seeing this. Like she is giving horrified. Right, like right. she's cr- like it it's so sad. Like they're funny as fuck. Yes. Yeah. But if you pay any attention to her, it's like, oh my God. Like, yeah, this girl is a bitch, but like in this moment, it's just it's the saddest fucking thing. Like they're yeah. really killing that woman. Yeah, yeah dude. Like, <laughs> literally. It's crazy because in the moment you're laughing at Adam Brody. But when you go back... And yeah, when you go back and then when he just starts fucking stabbing her, yeah. Like, yeah. like he's having fun. Like, yeah. This isn't, yeah. we have to do this. Like, he's fucking giving Looks it his like all. <laughs> <laughs> to Hello, police? Yeah. <laughs> I think we have to call the police. I think we have to call Chris Pratt. <laughs> hey. <laughs> but th- what was very sad to me is that in an interview, Megan Fox said that this, to her, was a representation of how the movie studios felt about her. She said they were willing to sacrifice her and her well-being for their own profit. Uh, And she's right. And she's very right. Yeah. Diablo Cody also said that the resurgence of this film's popularity might be a result of the Me Too movement, where the stories and struggles of women are taken more seriously to the public now. She's also right. Because Mm -hmm. this scene is, I mean, goddamn. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Goddamn. But Needy says they killed you. But Jennifer says that it should have killed her. 
back in the past, low shoulder stands over Jennifer's body. Ah, I roll credit. Yeah, uh, I didn't do that. With Nikolai tossing the knife into the devil's kettle. So here we are back. I was like, I because when I saw that thing, I was like, we're gonna be talking about this yeah. later. Oh yeah, and we and brings us back to dough. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> But Jennifer says that she remembers waking up and finding her way to Needy's house that night. We see her arrive covered in blood, and Needy remembers the rest. Jennifer says she couldn't bring herself to hurt Needy that night, and we see that after she left her house, she attacked and ate Ahmet, who somehow survived the fire alive. A boy was not crushed. Yeah. A boy was not crushed. <laughs> That's so sad. Yeah. yeah. She was like, you made it out? And he's like, yeah. She's like, come with me. Yeah. Well, she's literally like, does anyone know? Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, everyone. Everyone. I told everyone knows. Every person on the way here. Oh, wait. Was that like foreshadowing at the bar when she talked about when she's like, I want to try. What did she call it? She said something. Oh, sea cucumber or something. I can't uh, remember. I something something shitty. Something but very yeah. I wonder if that was like foreshadowing for that moment. Her eating him? Yeah. Maybe. All right. That's sad, though. Ahmet didn't do shit. No, he didn't. No. But from that moment on, she knew that that's what she had to do to keep going. And she says that when she's full, she's basically invincible. She demonstrates this by slicing her arm open and Needy watches as it heals up immediately. That's a lot. That's yeah. a lot to take in. Needy asks what she means by full and says that she saw her on the road. And when she saw her, she didn't even look human. Yeah. Jennifer's like, you know... You should talk to someone about these disturbing thoughts you're having. We're all very worried about yeah. you, especially Chip. Mm, you don't fucking speak yeah. his name. <laughs> <laughs> this is when Needy kicks her out. But when she gets up to leave, Needy's like, what are you doing? Jennifer's yeah. like, you just <laughs> fucking told me to leave. But she's like, I'll see you at school and just hops out the window. Right. My question, though, as she's telling the story about what happened to her, I'm like, does Jennifer not have any parents? Yeah. Because I'd be like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is wrong with you? So you come home bloody, you sleep yeah. all day. Yeah. <laughs> what's going on? And then you're great. Yeah. And then you're awful. Like, are you on, like, I'm Julie's mom. Are you on drugs? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, what's happening? No, it's a lot. But the next morning, we're at Colin's funeral, where Needy watches his mother cry over his casket. She heads to school later, where she sees people setting up for the spring formal, the theme of which is through the trees. <laughs> Why would it be anything else? It better not be anything else. One thing I want, <laughs> I want to point out, just a little gripe that I have. From this moment on, this whole movie is about that dance. It is. Yeah. And it, I feel like it would have been better if anyone had mentioned it beforehand. <laughs> You're like, right. You know? Yeah. I didn't even know this was coming up. Nope. No. And now it's like tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> That's all anybody cares about. I haven't made any plans. Nope. I, haven't... I don't have anything to wear. Yeah. <laughs> but Needy says, even though they had an assembly about Colin's death, people seem to just continue on unaffected. She then decides to do some research to figure out what the hell happened to Jennifer. In the library, reading books on the occult, we see the word succubus in the middle of the screen, and she reads chapters on impure sacrifices and destroying demons, learning that demons are at their very weakest when they're hungry, and the sure shot to kill a demon is a blade to the heart. To me, the whole research scene is yeah. always the laziest way to get what's happening. Fair. Yeah. I mean, uh, nay, we can't all Skype with Vincent D'Onofrio. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Fair enough. I, I love the succubus angle. Me too. I do too. My only thing is that I kind of figured it out earlier. Right. So I was like, okay, so when are you going to tell me that? I think this is for everyone who hasn't figured it out. Right. And I mean, I just appreciate the whole, because there's this like that old, like antiquated right. sacrifice of virgin situation. This is kind of, you know, flip yeah. it on its head. Right, I, right. I really think that's cool. And the thing is, is. is I, I've looked up, like I was trying to find it. I have not found one thing where they say you turn into a succubus if you are an impure sacrifice. Right. Oh. A, a succubus is a straight up demon. Demon, yeah. 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 And I, so this is very original. It's just a no. really, really cool way to yeah. tell the story. Like, I like it. And it's kind of cool because it, it takes the power back in uh -huh. a way. Yeah. yeah. Because it's basically using her sexuality as a weapon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other thing about it is that it's kind of, if you think about it on like a social commentary level, she's the monster that they made her. Yeah. Right. Which, no, literally. If she wasn't such a piece of shit in the past, you yeah. feel a lot more sympathy for her. Yeah. But that's a, that's a pretty heavy message. It mm -hmm. is. I will say that it kind of takes a little bit from vampire lore as well because mm -hmm. everything i read about succubi and incubi right they kind of just 
excuse me, but bang their targets to death. <laughs> well, <laughs> and so she's eating these people, right? So death. it's 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 a mesh. Of yeah, them. death right. by snoo snoo. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. They got that from the succubus lore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But Needy sits pensive outside the library where she says that she hasn't spoken to Jennifer since their bedroom encounter. And we see her looking at Jennifer who is chatting with someone in the hall. In a flash, we see Jennifer's smile covered in blood, but Needy's vision is obscured when Chip walks directly in front of her. It's like, I'm, I need to see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Chip tells her that he bought their formal tickets, but she says she can't go. She says he shouldn't go either and tries to walk off. But then she says she has something to show him. And when he guesses it's about Jennifer, he expresses concern for her. Needy pleads with him and he agrees to see whatever she has to show. In a secluded area, Needy explains the concept of demonic transference, which is what happens when you try to sacrifice someone who is impure. Again, I didn't find anything on that except this film. <laughs> which is great. Yes. Yeah. But my only thing is if she was just going to sit here and tell Chip the whole thing... We didn't really need to follow her to the library. Probably not. Yeah. Maybe she just no, has the book right. already. You know, yeah. I mean, or show her picking up the book and then she's like, Chip, this is what I learned. Or, uh, <laughs> it's a little spoon feeding. Yeah. That's I'm going to need a goddamn book report. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's high school, but shit. <laughs> but she explains what low shoulder did to Jennifer and says that Jennifer has been eating all these boys who have died mysteriously. She says the dance will be like an all you can eat buffet for Jennifer, which I thought was a pretty good line. <laughs> Chip tells Needy that she needs help. It's not that he doesn't believe her. He just doesn't believe this. All right. So <laughs> from when Jennifer visited her and started kind of telling her what was going on, uh -huh. from then on, I was like, okay, I started to enjoy the movie a little more. Good. And I was like, okay, this is, you know what I mean? I was like, all right, I see what's going on here. Um, and then this happens. <laughs> um, he's She's telling him about, you know, Jennifer and everything her being a succubus and whatnot uh-huh and then uh she says something about i don't tell whoppers or <laughs> i look i've heard that before nobody t nobody <laughs> nobody's ever said i've that. never heard that you look. can say a whopper of a lie and i've heard that too but <laughs> the, you've you've heard somebody fucking say i don't you're telling a whopper i've heard people say it, it was in a Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I. The correct uh, term is I'm telling a Big Mac. Yeah, they don't say they don't do it right. Yeah. All I'm saying is that I think I've heard it before, and I'm not just being a Diablo Cody apologist. I think you are. I'm really not. I think this one, this one's on the level. You guys are just lime green <laughs> jello. <laughs> but Chip brings up the dance again, telling her that he got her a corsage and everything. She finally says she'll be at the dance, but only because she has to keep an eye on Jennifer. And she tells Chip to promise her that he won't go. This killed me because she was like, I'm not going to the dance and you shouldn't either. No, I mean, I'm going to go to the dance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you you don't go. It's like, why didn't you yeah, leave with that? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, look, I am going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> but because of this, it's, it's obviously confusing to Chip. And so he's like, am I? I'm not your boyfriend anymore. Yeah. And she tells him it's not safe for them to be together right now. And he just leaves. This, what? this bothered me too, oh, because yeah. Chip jumps to, so I'm not your boyfriend anymore. And I'm like, of course you are Chip, like chill. But she's like, no, nah, we should. I'm like, what the, yeah. <laughs> what? you'll have to break what up. It, if, if she were to say it makes sense for us to not physically be together yeah. right now, that's fine. But be together. That that's means dating. be together. Yeah. What are you Especially doing? Especially as, an answer to so i'm not your boyfriend you go no of course you are yeah, yeah. but the dance isn't safe not well no no <laughs> yeah. it, this isn't about you it's, chip yeah. <laughs> i i too that i i'm glad that bothered you it <laughs> did because like, i did why too i was like, like why that? did you break up again i don't understand maybe she's like if i depress him enough to stay home <laughs> well, <laughs> i can enjoy the dance yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, if i break his heart i can go to the dance guilt-free <laughs> But we then get a montage of kids all over Devil's Kettle getting ready for the dance, including Needy, who is getting her hair straightened by her mom, and Chip, who is flexing in front of a mirror in his underwear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I thought it was adorable because his computer has a slideshow of yes. photos yeah. of Needy. Healthy relationship. I yeah. Just, it's, yeah. But his mom, played by Cynthia Stevenson, comes in and gives him some pepper spray to defend himself. She says basically from whatever's going on in town. Yeah. 
She asks if he's going to pick up Needy, and he says that he's meeting her there. Very sad. Yeah. But he eyes the computer slideshow as well as the corsage sitting on his desk. We then see a pair of photo ops, Needy with her smiling mother and Chip with his little sister, Camille. Afterward, we cut to Jennifer preparing for the dance. She combs her hair in front of the mirror, but a clump falls out. Through tears, she puts makeup on her face to cover up her pale, I haven't eaten a boy in a bit skin. (laughs) This scene is so sad. It's heartbreaking. And the way that she conveys so much without even like it is yeah. so fucking sad and then her <laughs> she's a fucking picture of herself on her yeah, vanity that's thing. fucking hilarious <laughs> yeah that's hilarious but this was super effective for me like it, i i really appreciated this it's funny because there have been little bits of sympathy that i've had for jennifer throughout right. yeah when you see her in the van oh yeah the entire scene by the waterfall mm-hmm. absolutely and this moment is just heart shattering yeah because you're like you know what Maybe this is all a matter of insecurity. Right. And when you realize that, you're like, maybe she's not such a jerk. Maybe no, she's I, she, acting. Well, she's she a, is jerk. a jerk. <laughs> but let me, let me, I mean, she's in her, she could have a good heart. Yeah. What the deal is, is that she might be acting out as a way to cover for how insecure she actually is, mm-hmm. which is, again, a very complex character. Yeah. yeah. Instead of her just being the archetypal popular jerk, yeah. right, all conveyed right. in her. Yeah. Smothering her face and foundation. So <laughs> it, sad. I mean, it, you know. But at the dance, Needy surveys the crowd of high schoolers looking for Jennifer, but she's not there. I just have to, because clearly you guys aren't going to, and I don't mm-hmm. know if it's because you're men and you just don't really notice it. Why the fuck did they do Needy like that with that dress? No, I I, I did. I I thought it was I thought it was an purpose. 80s dance. I was going to say, is this an 80s? Well, no, it was through the trees. No, yeah. <laughs> when she was she getting, should be dressed as a branch. When she was getting ready and I saw her mom doing her hair and she's taking pictures in the dress. I'm like, oh, it's an 80s thing. Like my mind yeah, goes yeah. to Never Been Kissed with Drew Barrymore well, no, yeah. in her 80s dress. Nobody is dressed like that at this dance. Well, I mean... I wh- don't know if y'all are trying to make us feel like needy is unattractive. I don't know what the fuck that was, but I do yeah. not appreciate it. I can't tell if it was also a matter of maybe that's the dress that her mom would buy her. Maybe she had to go to a thrift shop and that's the only dress she could find. That's you know, not the only dress at a thrift shop. I don't know. I've never looked <laughs> for dresses at a thrift shop. It was cruel. Yeah. <laughs> no, I did notice it. I thought... Uh, I- I just thought it was on purpose. I was like, well, I was did just, it for a reason. I was offended for needy. Wait, this movie doesn't take place in 1984? It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. Wow. But within earshot of the music, Chip walks outside towards the school. We hear a dog barking, followed by that same dog whimpering. Needy thinks that she eyes Jennifer at the dance, but the girl turns around to be someone else. Mr. Rabluski cuts the music and takes to the stage to welcome everyone to the spring formal. Back outside, as Chip continues walking, we see Jennifer appear behind him. He turns around when he thinks he hears something, and when nothing is there, he turns back to find Jennifer standing right in front of him. Her move. Yeah. It's like the only superpower. (laughs) (laughs) Well, aside from the jaw thing, I guess that's a big deal. (laughs) That shot of her, though, with her dress kind of flowing all Mm -hmm. far, like that, that's a very creepy shot. There are some like really great moments here. Yes. But Jennifer says that she needs to talk to Chip about Needy. She takes his hand and walks towards the trees. Chip says Needy has been acting weird, and Jennifer says that she thinks she knows why. She doesn't want to say it, but Needy was cheating on Chip with Colin. How fucking dare you? It's unbelievable. I'm so mad. Chip doesn't believe it, and Jennifer says that she can't believe Needy would hurt him like this, but she cares about him so much, more than she ever had the guts to admit. It's like, what are you doing, Jennifer? Yeah. What are you doing, dude? (laughs) This is when Jennifer leans forward to kiss him, and he doesn't fully reciprocate. At the dance, Mr. Rabluski introduces the band who not only has taken a break from their sold-out tour to be here tonight, but is playing for free. It's the reason for the season themselves, low fucking shoulder. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Uh, This just rose a question for me, though. Hmm. The guys that did this to you are literally in town. The guys yeah. that literally did this to you are 10 yards that way. Yes. Why are you fucking around with Chip, dude? Why? Why? Yeah. That question does come up in a bit. <laughs> but I th- I feel like this has a lot to do with that toxic relationship we- thing we were talking about. Mm-hmm. I'm mad. It's partially about Needy. Needy told her to leave. So now I got to fuck up Needy's life. I'm mad. 
I understand. <laughs> but it might make you feel better because low shoulder rips right into through the trees. <laughs> <laughs> They're one song. They're one song. I was like, you'd think they'd save this for the encore. Yeah, right away. <laughs> yeah, but all right. <laughs> It's the encore as well. <laughs> yes. They're going to play it twice. But we cut back to Jennifer and Chip who are making out on the ground. She tells him that he's salty and asks him to tell her that she's better than needy. He's like, what? Gross. Yeah. Intercut with them making out. Needy touches her own lips, realizing that Chip is in trouble. She drops her punch because <laughs> she had a glass of punch. <laughs> Does needy have the shining? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's got to get to the overlook. <laughs> but she drops her punch and rushes out to find him. We see Jennifer and Chip walking hand in hand through the grass to an abandoned swimming pool. She loves her condemned yeah. buildings, man. Hey, well, honestly, if we're talking about serial killer logic, she's kind of <laughs> doing a great job. <laughs> in all fairness, secluded area. Fair enough. Although she is picking people who will be missed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But the two of them head inside and sit at the edge of the pool together. Jennifer says that she feels empty and Chip agrees. I think they have different meanings of it, though. <laughs> yeah. She asks for another kiss and he gives it to her, but he realizes that he can't do this because it feels too weird. This is when Jennifer throws him into the pool and thrashes him around like he's nothing. He tries to get away, but she drags him back in. We see Needy continue running <laughs> and she finds, I guess this is her corsage. <laughs> She's fucking chopping. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, God, <laughs> that lady's flying. She's got to get to the overlook. Yeah, man. It's important. Yeah. I guess that's her corsage that Chip dropped. That she found on the ground. Right. Yeah. But she sees that and she realizes that Chip and assuming Jennifer well, yeah. Yeah. are at the pool because she does hear him scream. I do want to say the music in this section sounds like that really awesome song from 28 Days Later. <laughs> dude yeah. yeah that's such a great track but needy makes her way inside and finds jennifer and chip in the pool together jennifer whips her head towards needy her jaw wide open in a roar of sharp teeth now this is the shot i was talking about yes yeah. it's fucking good and it's practical you love it there's, yeah you love to see it there's a bit of cg work because i think they had a model and they composited them yeah but goddamn, no it looks good yes yeah but Jennifer sinks her teeth into Chip's neck, but Needy dives in and forces Jennifer under the water. Suddenly, Jennifer comes rushing at them like a wave. Chip tosses Needy the pepper spray that his mom gave him, and when Jennifer pops up, it's in her face with a can of mace, and she <laughs> cries all over the place. <laughs> but she pukes black bile all over Chip and then levitates above the pool, water dripping from her dress. I'm just like, you know that that's not going to hurt yeah. her. You you saw her slice her arm open and it healed. But it's a distraction. I guess. Yeah. They should have done more with the time, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mean instead of just stand there yeah. staring yeah. at it? Wow. <laughs> but yeah, Chip's like, she can fly. And as they get out of the pool, Needy's like, okay, chill out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. She's just hovering. She's falling with style. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Needy finally says what we always knew. Jennifer is not a good friend. And she asks your question. She's like, why Chip? She could literally have anyone she wants. And she asks if Jennifer is really that insecure. And that is definitely a sore spot. Needy takes her digs at Jennifer again. Some of them really betraying some stuff that she definitely told Needy in confidence. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if that's all, the sign of a bad friend. Yeah. Yes. Because even if y'all aren't friends anymore, you still you yeah. keep your fucking mouth shut. Yeah, These are still secrets. Needy. Yes. Jesus Christ. But Jennifer advances on her, saying that she's going to eat her soul and shit it out. Before she reaches Needy, Chip reaches out and impales Jennifer through the stomach with what I learned is called a pool skimmer. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> but he then collapses to the floor and Jennifer just pulls it out, putting her hands over the bleeding wound and then asking Needy if she has a tampon. Now, not every joke hits. Yeah, no. And then yeah. she like scurries off i was like yeah. that line was not funny enough to leave well on. the way that she delivers the next line is very funny to me because she's out of breath because she was impaled because oh, yeah. like, <laughs> i thought you might be plugging <laughs> and then leaves and i'm like that okay i don't know if that's funny or if just megan fox sold it so well that it's good it's probably just megan fox but did anybody else get um when they're like there's this like weird supernatural fight going on mm -hmm. and then they're like 
you know, dealing with their friendship issues yeah. at the same time. Did anybody else get Death Becomes Her vibes? Oh, hey. Yeah, yeah. When she's like, and I hurt you on purpose. Yeah. That scene when they're like fucking fucking each other up and they're, she's like, you stole my boyfriend. Yeah, that is fair. <laughs> hey, there could also be some shades of the craft. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true too. But that is funny. That is, I didn't even think of that. That's a great film. Death oh, Becomes Her. Yeah. 10 out of 10. Oh, yeah. God damn, that's I'm a good I'm sure movie. we'll get to it one day, but spoiler alert. 10 <laughs> out of fucking 10. But when Jennifer does not get that tampon, she bails out. <laughs> <laughs> she bails out of an adjacent window. Needy drops to the ground in tears, cradling the face of a dying chip. He apologizes, saying he should have believed her. She promises to get him help, but can't get her phone to work. He tells her that he's going somewhere and that he thinks that he already died, but he woke up when he heard her voice. <laughs> I was like, God damn it. Yeah, I'm crying. Poor guy. Yeah. yeah. But they say that they love each other. And after a little joke about her dress, I'm sure you guys were thankful. Yeah. <laughs> Chip slips into death. Her screams echo as she holds his body. Poor Chip. Yeah. Poor Needy. Yeah. I was genuinely surprised that Chip died. Yeah. yeah. Because typically speaking with movies like this, he'd live, they'd kill Jennifer and then yeah. Yeah, yeah. live happily ever after. But not this time around. But later that night, Jennifer lies in bed looking in her yearbook like it's a menu circling boys <laughs> <laughs> that she plans to eat later. <laughs> she turns off her TV and lamp and tries to get some shut eye. So the infomercial that she was watching, <laughs> uh -huh. I know it's random, but I remember that shit being on TV all <laughs> the fucking time. I, whenever I think of infomercials, all I think of her slap job and the fucking, was it Sham Wow? Sham Wow, yeah. yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Or uh, Billy Mays, yeah. man. Oh, he that's was right. He fucking yeah. legendary. Or Ron Popeil. Yeah, that Set guy. it and forget yes. it. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I've watched television at night. <laughs> Join us on our new show, Infomercial. <laughs> remember that infomercial? Yeah, I couldn't sleep once either. <laughs> <laughs> But Needy crashes through her window and jumps on top of her, brandishing a box cutter. I was tickled by this because at the beginning, it, she's all like stealth mode out yeah, the window. Yeah. And then she just like fucking crashes. In yeah. Through. Just why were you slinking around? Yeah. Well, she's got to get the drop on. Her. I think she was watching the infomercial. Yeah. And then she she's like, damn, that, I could get into really good shape. <laughs> but Jennifer takes a damn bite out of her. And after some banter about like buying weapons at Home Depot yeah. or something, <laughs> Needy pulls the box cutter, slashing an X into Jennifer's stomach, effectively crossing her out. The two then tussle with Jennifer levitating the fight into midair. Needy snatches the BFF necklace off of Jennifer's neck and it falls to the floor in slow motion. While it falls, we get a flashback to the two of them in the sandbox, which I thought was very, I thought it was good. Yeah. I like that. Well, because it like that, her taking that necklace off is such like the end of the end of this. Yeah. You know what I mean? No matter what happens from this point, this era is over. Yeah. Like it's done. All we right, are no longer right. friends. We are no yeah. longer <laughs> friends. <laughs> but as the necklace hits the ground, Jennifer falls to her bed. It's like all her power was in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Needy falls on top of her, sinking the box cutter into her heart with a scream. Jennifer says, my tit. Needy's like, no, your heart. That line should be stupid. <laughs> it, if you take it at face value, it's like okay, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. But like that is that it's fucking great. Yes, like it's so good because it shows you where what Jennifer's thinking, mm -hmm. what her basically what the priorities are, or yes, what right. she even thinks her worth is. No, you didn't get stabbed in the tit. No. You got fucking stabbed in the heart. It's like it's it's, it's I don't so know. good. It, it, it's great. <laughs> yeah. To me now, I do want to point out and to kind of redeem Diablo Cody for what she said earlier about a favorite quote. She said that this is actually her favorite quote in the whole film. I hope so. And I think like exactly what you're saying. And again, it's a comment on objectification. Absolutely. Because, yeah, you see a tit, but like that's a human with exactly. a heart. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a lot. And John Paul's just eyeballing me. But like, I, I just took it as she was dumb. I was like, <laughs> that, damn, you're well, stupid. I, mean, I feel like I feel like if I had seen this when I was younger, I that would have made me roll my eyes. And yeah. I'll, I'll tell you the truth. When I saw this, what, 2009, I was like 18 years uh -huh. old. I was like, what? Yeah. Like, I was confused. But now growing up and like having more, I guess, mature ideas about right. uh 
you know, not just women in media, but women in society as far as like how they're treated. Uh This line is genius. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a big risk because right. oh, yeah. it could very easily be seen as, are you fucking this dramatic moment and that's what y'all chose to yeah. say? Like, it, I it, I like it. I, I love it. But Jennifer breathes her last breath as Needy looks on. Suddenly, Jennifer's bedroom door opens and her mother, played by Carrie Gonzel, walks in to see quite a fucking sight. Mm-hmm. Oh, now you have parents. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, did you notice though, after she dies, she goes from looking yes. all rough to like yeah. back to herself. I was oh, like, yeah. Fuck. because she killed the demon. Yeah. yeah. But Needy pulls the knife from Jennifer's chest and collapses on the bed as Mrs. Check rushes over to Jennifer and cradles her in tears and confusion. Wouldn't you jump on Needy? Yeah. Like she literally caught her knife in her chest. Oh yeah. yeah. I would fuck. I would murder her. I would kill her. Needy just kind of rolls over and relaxes. Yeah, she's yeah. like, Whoa. Yeah. Maybe Glad I'd that's be- over. <laughs> some sleep. Finally, no more fucking infomercials. <laughs> <laughs> but back at the psychiatric hospital, Needy says that she doesn't even know who Needy Lesnicki is anymore. She's then brought a plate of, I think, dog food. <laughs> 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 and she admits that now she's very bad and very damaged. But on the plus side, she says one of the things that even demon scholars might not know is that if you get bitten by a demon and live, some of their powers transfer. I don't know that that's true. Uh, neither do I. No. I well, well, I mean, I don't believe in I, demons, so <laughs> it's not true, but you know okay, what I mean. Okay, Shane. Um, <laughs> my whole thing is I really wish this had been even just a throwaway line. Uh-huh. Like, like established somewhere because now it's like come on I felt like yeah. it was okay so now you're Jennifer's body okay yeah. <laughs> wait <laughs> now she's oh. Jennifer's body All right. okay <laughs> now I know that I why I married you I <laughs> now felt you're the same prune thing. Tracy well, no, <laughs> <laughs> I, look I, I understand where you're both coming from but the the entire point of this albeit a little clunky is to service the very cathartic ending that we get. Absolutely. And I'm so here for that. It's too clunky. That's yeah. my thing. I'm not even mad that it happened. Uh-huh. It's too clunky. There should have been. But actually, of, it's yeah. like, <laughs> well, no, what are you talking about? Yeah. It's, it's funny because she said even demon scholars might not know this. <laughs> yeah. So they didn't have to show it in the book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they should have just showed it in the book. Even if like we're just scanning through the pages she's reading and you yeah. see it. You know what yeah. I mean? Anything, yeah. anything. She doesn't even have to say bitten, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you don't have to do that. <laughs> But she pulls her sleeve down and scratches at a scar on her shoulder from where she was bitten, saying for once in her life, she just might get lucky. I will say, though, that makes my complaints about earlier in the film null and void. Because, yeah, of course, she fucking drop kicked the yes. orderly across the room. Mm-hmm. She's a demon yeah. lady now. <laughs> we we and, couldn't know that before. Yeah. And that's why the um, tetherball broke, too. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like, OK, I now. OK, I'll forgive those. But at the time, I was like stop it's starting to come full circle yeah but the camera tilts up to show needy levitating in front of the large window at the top of her cell she kicks it open and walks right through the facility's fence like it's nothing now clad in a hoodie and walking into the night she finds the ceremonial dagger that nikolai used to kill jennifer floating in a nearby stream as the sun begins to rise she attempts to hitchhike a car pulls over and the driver is played by lance fucking henrickson I didn't even fucking notice. It's such a, an interesting cameo. That's yeah. crazy. I was like, that is Lance yeah. Henderson. That's crazy. I wanted to point out, though, you said she found the knife. Those orange balls are around the knife. Yeah. Oh, shit. So now we see, you know, the, the ones that the scientists were yeah. trying to find out where the hole went. Scratching their heads. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. I didn't even notice that. That's that's good. Because it's like this ending is kind of about closure. Right. Yeah. And that was another another mystery solved Mm -hmm. basically but he asks where she's headed and she says east toward madison when he asks why she tells him that she's following a rock band he tells her they must be one hell of a group and she replies that tonight is going to be their last show chef's kiss yeah i love it the camera rises up as the car speeds away and we notice a low shoulder road sign and Violet by Hole begins to play over the first set of credits. Amazing fucking song. It's it's perfect. It's yeah. perfect. Hole and Courtney Love do not get the respect they deserve. <laughs> no, they do. I love Hole. I'm, I've got mixed feelings about Courtney Love. I but. will say, <laughs> Courtney, 
I don't I don't like what she's been doing recently. Yeah. It's very You need to sit down. Yeah, man. calm down. But I will say that she does not get the credit she deserves for, for what, she's, what done? she's done. Definitely. Same page. All right. But we're treated to a montage of low shoulder enjoying their newfound fame full of camera flashes, women, booze, lavish hotel rooms, and rock star antics. Suddenly, the doorbell rings and we see blood splash against the wall. What then follows is a montage of crime scene photos of each of the murdered members of Low Shoulder, culminating with a shot of Nikolai, who has the ceremonial dagger planted in his gut. Love it. Love it. On security footage, we see a group of girls rushing toward their hotel room with excitement, passing Needy, who is on her way out. The girls scream when they reach the room, and Needy stares into the camera as the tape glitches out. And once again, the credits roll. So, what did you guys think? Of Jennifer's body. Um, as we've gone along, I've seen the error of how I was watching it. <laughs> mm. He can see clearly so, now. <laughs> well, no, we won't go that far. <laughs> um, it does fix some things for me, mm-hmm. but not enough. <laughs> um, I, I don't mind the movie, and if you've never seen it, watch it. It was just a lot. I mean, it was just, I don't know, man. It just didn't do it for me. Um, it is it is a good movie. And I do, I will say, uh, like I said, from the point on for when she kind of reveals herself to Needy, I was like, Megan Fox is good creepy. Oh, yeah. Yes. You should just be doing horror movies. Fuck what anybody else she is really, saying. She's, Fuck the yeah. action, the drama, the whatever. Who cares about that? Just go do horror movies. She's great. Because you're is. good. Yeah. You did good with the screaming when they were killing you. You do good being a bad guy and are, pardon, you know what I mean, a bad person. Uh-huh. Um, just do that. You know what I mean? You're not a bad actress. No. Go, no. go do horror movies. You know what I mean? But this movie just was, I don't know, it was kind of all over the place for me. <laughs> it kind of confused me. It kind of made me angry. It kind of made me sad. It just, it was all. <laughs> like, I don't like a yeah, feeling like, thing. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> I really liked it. I'm honestly mad that it took me this long to watch it. I am too, because I've been. I know. All right. <laughs> all right. I know. I'm glad you know. <laughs> <laughs> um. But I, I really, really like it. It's not... I do have my issues as I have interjected to rant about. But the messaging... Like, I feel like this movie... It's almost two movies. Yeah. Like, you can watch it and take everything at face value. And it's a little ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Or if you really see what I think the the messaging that was trying to shine through. If right. you take it for that. it's It's great. It's not perfect. There's some clunky shit. There's some very, very fucking cringy and tone deaf <laughs> and disgusting dialogue choices. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But man, fucking the the acting's great. You have all these conflicting feelings inside of yeah. you because like, is it even Jennifer's fault that she's doing this? But at the same time, the victims that she chose, like, stop. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's there's just there's so much here. And I feel like that's what a good movie can do is right, make you right. like but wait though yeah because i i found myself very conflicted at several points yeah. in this film i think it's fun to be challenged yeah you know when you watch a movie a lot of times it's just getting you from act to act to act yeah mm-hmm. but this one you're like well wait how should i be feeling right now yeah mm-hmm. i just kind of wish and i'm sure that would have just made it too easy for me but i do kind of wish that she went after assholes and yeah. then maybe still went after Chip to show that there's something irredeemable in her that she would right, do that right. because Chip is a good guy. Yeah. But for her to only have killed good guys, like they, nobody did anything. Yeah. No, they really didn't. Nobody did anything. I mean, the the of course, the the band kill all of them. Right, right. Yeah. But like, even if she would have killed Chris Pratt, did he deserve to be murdered after seeing him at the bar? <laughs> you know, maybe not. But he was kind of an asshole yeah. so i mean we don't know maybe her going on going after him alludes to something that he's done that we don't know about but we know these guys didn't do anything especially yeah. colin especially oh, colin yeah. and chip well chip well, chip yeah. made out with her he shouldn't well, he shouldn't have done it he shouldn't have done that but <laughs> I, I, I thought that too should have been doing that i will say that chip his reasoning for dying is simply needy's proximity mm-hmm. right colin just 
gets killed because why? Is because that also he, Needy's he said proximity? He was cool. yeah. yeah. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, and it would probably have just been, yeah, fucking kill him, Jennifer. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah. that would have made us feel for Needy a little bit less if I was True. like, get get their asses. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. It's it's this movie's a lot. Um, mm-hmm. but I I really like it. And I like it even more after watching Diab- Diablo Cody and Megan Fox talk about it. Yes, absolutely. And they were like 10 years removed in that interview. Damn. So like not only having the knowledge of the film and everything, but getting that perspective of getting fucking all the hate in the world for it. Mm-hmm. And then now 10 years later, people are like, wait, this movie was good. <laughs> Which I, I, I swear to God. <laughs> they've just been through all of it at the point of that interview so it was very very interesting to me i feel like that has to be very rewarding (laughs) on one hand but also fuck you a little bit (laughs) you know like where were you in 2009 yeah Yeah. the the reviews man i don't know if you ever look back and read any of them Mm -mm. i just remember word of mouth they were not only savage but they were like fucking gross Mm. like i saw one review that someone had shared i think it was on vox they didn't write it on Vox, but they shared it on Vox as a mm-hmm. reason to be like, look at this shit they were saying about it. It was basically saying, oh, if you just want to see Megan Fox being hot, that's not a good enough reason to watch this shitty movie. Stuff like that. <laughs> wow. Like, and I'm like, dude, you then it you just didn't like it. That's yeah. fine, but you don't have to be a dick about it. No, that's yeah. the thing. That's what I'm saying, how Megan Fox was treated. Yeah. If it was somebody else, it would be like, wow, this movie fucking sucks. But no, it's you're just <laughs> it's like, why are you attacking her person? Like I it's so weird. Yeah. One one critic uh wrote a passage in their review angry at the movie because needy nor jennifer got naked <laughs> why they how, don't like, need to be how naked. dare they keep their clothes it's, on it's shit like, those bitches it's shit like <laughs> it's that's disgusting it's shit like that and so you're like this is what this these are the level of critic critique mm-hmm. we were up against yeah, yeah. That's, you know that's fucking ridiculous but long story short i enjoy watching this movie yeah i always have i think i enjoyed even more as an adult I do think that this movie is <sighs> Diablo Cody said something that she said that she hopes when people go to see this movie, especially if they're a teenage girl, they see it and they want to make something. I love that. And I feel like if more people saw it and if they had marketed it to the right audience, yeah. I think it could have inspired so many people, what, 12 years ago? Yeah. Yeah. But now the resurgence of it, it's on fucking Hulu right now. Watch it. Not mm-hmm. sponsored, but watch it. <laughs> you might get inspired. <laughs> but I, I don't know, man. I, I think just like you said, knowing everything they went through during and after the production of it, mm-hmm. it warms my heart to see it getting the audience it deserves. Yeah. But I guess that leads us to ratings. I've been doing this thing where I do my positives and negatives. <laughs> I'm going to continue doing that. Okay. <laughs> Eventually, I'm going to do it so much that I don't call it out anymore. <laughs> <laughs> But on the positive side, I love the succubus bit. Absolutely. Such an interesting thing to use in a horror film. Mm-hmm. Underutilized. Oh, yeah. Um, I love that this story is told in a way that it's rarely told. It's subverting so many horror tropes. Oh, yeah. With this like feminist angle. And it's so smart. I just think it's a ton of fun to watch. It's way deeper than it appears. For sure. Like it's saying so much in this movie that I think it's it warrants a rewatch. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, love the music, mm-hmm. and I especially love especially through the trees. Yeah. <laughs> That's our new anthem. <laughs> I love the I love the, a lot of the writing. Let me get to my <laughs> let me get to my negatives. Some of the writing. <laughs> it is it is not it is not aged well in some places. Absolutely not. Uh, some of the jokes simply don't work. No, and some of the dialogue doesn't either. But I think that Diablo Cody has a very unique voice. I think we can all agree on Mm -hmm. that. And these performances are fucking fantastic. They are. But all that to say, on a scale of one to 10 quirky lines of dialogue, (laughs) (laughs) I am going to give Jennifer's body 8.5 out of 10 quirky lines of dialogue. Hell yeah. yeah. I genuinely, I, I love this movie. Yeah. And I can forgive it for its flaws because of what it was trying to do and say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that, even with its flaws, it's still really damn good. It is. But uh, yeah, I may be the highest. I don't know, but I uh, <laughs> I will open the floor to you. All right. Um, 
So what I did this time was I didn't have a score because okay. I wanted to come in and see what everybody had to bring and then just kind of make my score from there. Um, I do see that I was watching it wrong, that it is a comedy. <laughs> I guess it's supposed to be funny or whatever. Right. So it does change things and I do see, oh, okay, well, you know, that's why that was kind of stupid funny or whatever it wasn't that serious or whatnot i love that that's your commentary on it being a comedy it's supposed to be funny or whatever <laughs> well <laughs> like i said i'll be honest i thought this was like a halloween i this oh. is like a serious horror movie oh no. so i'm going in then with i that, can totally see why and i'm be like this, this is not i was like what what are you talking about mm -hmm. but now i i see it's it was you know okay it was there was some gags or whatever yeah and like you said the thing that hurt it for me was the dialogue it was like <laughs> so, like i said it would get good and i'm like okay this is cool this is cool then you hit me with the insensitive joke or you hit me with and it's like man i don't i don't want to hear that yeah. you know what i mean yeah. i know that's not cool and it just kind of it, it kind of hurt it hurt it for me but right understanding now you know like you guys were saying the message behind the movie and whatnot and i get it and maybe i'll give this movie a second chance or a third chance because nice. i have the, that was my second time watching it and pay attention a little more than not just having to do it and like i said i i want to see a slasher i want to <laughs> whatever right. and megan fox was good mm -hmm. and she's super creepy yeah and the effects were great and it, it was just it was Man, yeah, you know, yeah, you had me, and then you had to start talking. <laughs> it was like fuck, you know. It was like, oh, this is this is great. You know what I mean? All yeah. right. And then, like you said, the sucky bus angle. Oh, I yeah. love it. I want to see more. You know what I mean? Like the Wendigo. Let's see oh, some more of this. You know what I mean? Don't yes. get me started well, yeah. on the Wendigo. <laughs> Don't get us going. Um, but it did. It didn't do for me what some other movies do for me mm -hmm. and like i said i will give it a, a a third watch but for me like i said just the dialogue hurt it a lot and it does feel dated yes and that too i was like ooh, you know what i mean <laughs> yeah um yeah. so for me on a scale from one to ten quirky lines of dialogue i have to give jennifer's body a 7.5 hey respectable i am genuinely very yeah, surprised it, respectable like i said it came to a point to where i was like okay this is this is a good movie right i was like you just put all this shit crammed together before this part mm -hmm. and it's like okay now we're getting to what's <laughs> happening here and and i'll be on i figured out she was a sucky bus a lot but a lot right. earlier yeah. before she was like this is what it is guys <laughs> but like I said, it, it's not it's not a horrible movie. No. But knowing now that it's horror comedy, then I can be like, okay, I see what <laughs> you did there. But before I was like, I thought this was serious horror. And I'm right. like, okay, let's scare me. Or you know what I mean? Or and like, yeah, yeah, dazzle me. <laughs> and it did just, it, it was like, okay, I was wrong. I watched this completely wrong. But it's not a bad movie. No. It's really not. And and you said those were practical effects, some of them? A lot of them, yeah. That Love shit it. was, it, it did look good. Yeah. That was fantastic. But, you know, I think 7.5 is good. Yeah. Coming from you? Yeah, well, I'm very like surprised. I, said, I didn't great. hate the movie. I was just, it was just a lot at times. Uh -huh. There was a lot going on. The fire, come on. <laughs> yeah, I you know. know. I mean? <laughs> that I had. Yeah, that lost the point there for yeah. me. <laughs> Nobody, nobody's defending the fire. Right. No. <laughs> and they used the song way too much. I know you like it. Disagree. <laughs> and you've got two lighters up. <laughs> Hard <laughs> there, disagree. There was a, it was a lot. Um. I mean, I don't I'm not going to say everything over again, but I what hurt it for me at all is the dialogue and some of the shit that I'm like, oh, we were yeah. like, oh, we're saying that shit in 09, dude. Yeah. Like, yikes. Yeah. Um, A lot of like weirdly anti-Asian jokes. I was a little confused by that. Yeah. Um, Which I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. But I mean. I don't know. I'll I'll chalk that up to to bad dialogue as well, which is the the biggest offender yeah. for me. Yeah. Oh, and I will I will point out the only person saying them was Jennifer. Right. So I didn't know if that was intentionally trying to make her <laughs> oh, look. Oh, she's also racist. Yeah. She's also an asshole. You <laughs> know? know. You didn't need to say those things to get that. Oh point no, no, no 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 no. Yeah. No. You we are, done we a got lot it of right. Yeah. yeah. 
But yeah, that's the that's the biggest issue for me. That and now that you brought it up again, the fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have big issues with the fire. Yeah, I don't like the fire. But I feel like maybe for the first time, um, I had a score after watching it and then reading about it. And then when I watched that interview, that uh-huh. changed my score. Wow. And to be completely honest, I wanted to add a full point just for what I learned watching Megan Fox and Diablo Cody speak about it. But that would have put it at a number that I'm not comfortable giving (laughs) (laughs) with the flaws that it does have. So I'm going to give it a 0.5. All right. So on a scale from one to 10 quirky lines of dialogue, I also gave Jennifer's body 8.5. Wow. I gave it an eight, but fucking hearing what they went through and the intentions behind this film and the fuck it, how much it was shat on for really no good reason. I had to add a little bit, but I, I couldn't give it a nine. No, I know you could. <laughs> I, I had issues that were too big to give it a nine. But hey, through the trees. <laughs> okay, it's a nine. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, I'm comfortable at an 8.5. And I feel like if, if you haven't seen this in a while, definitely watch it again. Mm-hmm. I went into this with an open mind. When I was younger, I was like, that movie looks like trash. Like, I was positive that this was going to be a bad movie. Yeah. And that, like, disappoints me now mm-hmm. that I, you know, I drank the Kool-Aid. I drank yeah. the Flavor-Aid. You know what I mean? Like, the Kool-Aid's like, thank you. <laughs> Damn it, man. One thing I do want to say is that I have heard through interviews from Megan Fox Corinne Kusama and Diablo Cody that they are all interested in the idea of a possible either TV series or sequel. If if all three of them were involved, yes, that's I, the only I, way I would watch. Yeah, and I, I would. And be I'm there. scared, but yeah. I would still watch. <laughs> and Amanda Seyfried needs to be in there too. Oh, for sure. I would think she would. I don't know her. I would hope. Yeah. Well, I I read that her and Megan Fox have both said this is their favorite thing that they've ever done. Either of them. Do it, Amanda. Right. Yeah. So do it, Amanda. <laughs> do it for all of us. Well, that's all from us at Podmortem. What would you rate Jennifer's body and what should we watch next? Let us know on Twitter at the Podmortem. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook. Be sure to follow each of us on Twitter at TravisMWH, at Blood and Smoke, and at RealStreeter84. Please consider pledging to our Patreon and stay tuned until after the music for a special thank you to our Windigo Gitter patrons. And remember... Be careful of what you sacrifice on the ladder of success. It just might come back to bite you. Until next time. Thank you for staying tuned. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Windigo Getter patrons. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> special thank you to these salty folks. <laughs> Chris Antaveras, Kristen Lofton, Megan Martinez, Kimberly Bass, Melanie Van Houston, Sophie Hodson, Anthony Jerome M., Jordan Nash, Kent and Allison O'Morton, Guy54, Lala Thomas, Travis and Nisa Hunter, Miguel Myers ATX, Mandy, Jennifer Perez, Pierre Lombard, Carissa, TJ Bronson, Gabrielle Trevino, Spooky Mom, Andy Teague, Applin Ontiveros, Karima Rhodes, Antonio Huerta, Kimberly Kleindienst, and Will Brown. Thank you all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all, and we know that anyone who is not you is honestly just lime green jello. Ah, <laughs> they're jealous. Yeah. They can't even admit it. Through the trees. <laughs> Get your lighters ready, folks. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs>